I guess Michael. I love you. I know. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. What? Oh, it's just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What the hell is this? This is for Brody. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Beetlejuice. 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 It's showtime. Hello. Hello, nerds. Yes, this is me, Paul, giving a message to everyone who is watching right now. And a few surprises, I guess, for people who were part of this episode who didn't think I would be a part of it. No, no, no. I could not abide by me not being on a podcast. Um, but yes, just want to say a big thank you to Jake, Graham, Sammy, uh, Jessica and fucking Hobo Lee. Um <laughs> Well, doing this episode without me, um, yeah, I was it's it's my wedding anniversary, so I could, had to miss out. But I thought I'd leave a little Easter egg, a little surprise, and say this is my favorite Batman movie. So I am very good. So I'm not involved in talking about it. Danny DeVito is absolutely amazing as as the Penguin. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is iconic as Catwoman, and I bet Jessica looks amazing. Um, uh, like say when you see her come up. Like say Jessica's like done a little something for you, so um hope you do enjoy that. Um but yes, I am like say thanks so thankful that we have such a great team that um everything goes ahead uh, as planned, even without me. I am becoming uh not needed, which is great for me. So I might as well just fuck off more often. But yes, um so hope you enjoy the episode. It is gonna be a fun one. Let's see who um Graham upsets and goes off in weird tangents. I'm looking forward to watch along. So everyone who um, who's watching back and didn't expect me, bye. Uh, stay nerdy, everyone. Bye. And we're live. We're live. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nerdy Up North podcast. It's a nerdy podcast, and it's hosted by Northern Nerds. I am one of your hosts, Sam. And I'm the other host, Jake, this time. <laughs> Paul's away on assignment at the moment, uh, hopefully having a nice Whitby anniversary. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. <laughs> we know he's going to listen to this immediately <laughs> as soon as we send it over. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I am joined, as Paul would say, by a cacophony of nerds. Oh. We have Jessica in her excellent, excellent outfit showing us all up once oh. again. <laughs> I was getting excited and waving at her like, hey, Jessica. <laughs> We've got... The, the hobo man, the hobo myth, and the hobo legend. <laughs> Lee's here. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. And of Hi, course, Lee. we have on assignment from the land of sci-fi, uh, science officer Sinoise, who's uh, decided to come and slum it with us and watch some, you know, <laughs> comic book movies. <laughs> you kid stuff. You fools. You poor fools. And like <laughs> me back onto the main podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it seriously. I'm literally at the bottom of my screen. I've got Jessica looking like amazing in like an outfit that none of us could pull off. Like literally. <laughs> no. This idea of just be like Jessica is the only one in the whole room who could do that. And then uh, and then like Lee just <laughs> looking like a desperately Lee. desperately trying to finish his like vape before he started. <laughs> so his room has been gradually getting more smoky over the last like five minutes while we've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some Tim Burton esque, you know, like set dressing. Yeah, he's I'm, just I'm bringing the I'm waiting, for you. I'm waiting for your mum to knock, knock on the door, Lee, and you try to hide the evidence or something. <laughs> I'll like, open a window. I'm like, no, <laughs> don't come in. I love that Lee looked at his door. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, why is he inspiring me, man? Lee? I'm 36. Lee. <laughs> he's coming. He's coming. Well, tonight we're all joined together because we're going to do, we're going to talk about. Which I think is probably one of the best Batman films, Batman Returns. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. say it's up there. Like, there's only the more the most recent one I would put around then. But yeah, mm -hmm. well, I, I, I I think for for Batman, it's basically like 
depending on what you want out of Batman, your favorite changes. Like it's not, it's very rare that it's like, that's a bad Batman movie. It's usually yeah. that's aiming for a different thing. Like, you know, people love the Batman yeah. and like, and, you know, and then people love like sort of the Tim Burton Batmans, even though they're not really that accurate to the main law. No. But then you have people who genuinely love stuff like Batman and Robin because it's absolute camp trash. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, but that's the thing. It's like, I can't say it's a bad movie because it's brilliant at what it does. But it is like, this is really stupid, <laughs> you know, and this isn't Tim Burton at all. So it's. It changed. Leah, you're Leah, you're okay. Are you, are you all right? I, I keep hearing some weird noises in my house. Like, I, there's been like voices like coming from behind us for a while, talking about <laughs> goth girls and big boobs and stuff. And <laughs> and <laughs> oh no! Get, oh, oh no! It's back! It's back! Oh no! It's oh, gonna no, get us! Holy, holy crap, ah! everyone! <laughs> oh, what's happening? Oh no! <gasps> no God, no! Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's me, Paul, the leader of Nerdy Up North. I've entered Lee's body for the night, and I'm here to talk about Batman Returns. You just, you just cannot have a podcast without him, can you? I can't believe you're here. My God. Let, let, well, Lee, Lee, I need to, no, Lee, Paul. Lee, Paul? Paul Lee? I don't Paul. know. Paul, Paul Lee. Lee. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to see both your hands so you're not inviting like big titted goth girls on again. No, no, um... <laughs> okay, cool, okay. Well, as long keep as that, keep them to the Instagram. <laughs> That's it. Stop liking those videos, Paul, damn it. Well, I'll get the, I'll get the disclaimer out of the way with it, and then I'll crack on with it. It's too late, episode. I've said big did golf girl. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to get in there before you say something else. So, everything discussed in today's episode is our opinions and our opinions alone. If you'd like to discuss anything from today's episode, please come and join us on the Facebook page the discord or the comment section where we can have an open discussion but what we won't have is anyone coming for us and telling us our opinions are wrong we can all agree to disagree in fandom so let's keep it fun keep it kind and keep the toxic behavior out of a nerdism you fuckers right. oh. <laughs> i kind of well, feel like so a third sorry. wheel here now like a third call <laughs> <laughs> no, how long funny. are you gonna stick around for pauline <laughs> Um, well, we'll see. I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit. I might pop in and out, um, but I'm going to make sure that I'm definitely back when Lee goes to bed and gets in with Bex so that <laughs> I can take over. Wow. Oh, no, I don't like <laughs> wow. What is going on with Paul Lee right now? <laughs> is, it, is it Paul Lee or is it Pauline? Is it like, Pauline, 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 Pauline. Pauline. <laughs> I like Pauline. Please don't sleep with me, oh. boy. <laughs> <laughs> right get you all back on subject i yeah. have the taglines for batman returns now the, the previous batman movie that me and jake did uh, last year had a very yeah. oh, it was such a really good one but i feel like this one might actually top it okay ready yep yeah. <laughs> from the rooftops of gotham the perfect enemy comes to life, and only one can save the city. It's a creature of the night. <laughs> okay, kind of vague. <laughs> I, I, I like one, it's a bit long, isn't it? It's really <laughs> weird. In the 90s, they did have long taglines, but then they they come back <coughs> with the bat, the cat, the penguin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, then, the cat, the bird, or something, you know, maybe. My, my best that one, or the it. best one, and really straight to the point is Returns, June 19th. Okay. <laughs> Batman Returns. Returns again. <laughs> that, that, June that, 19th. That, that's done by like a person in marketing who like only eats bread and cheese or something. They're like, nope, no <laughs> nonsense. No, it's all I need. <laughs> that is it. Oh, right. I, 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 like, I remember the poster for this, though, that had all the heads stacked up on top of each yeah. other. It's quite interesting because mm -hmm. normally... Like movie posters tend to do like a pyramid of people, mm. but like this was just like a straight stack with like Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> we, we it was really good though that they did the film this way because obviously the first one they just had the Joker. I mean, it does have Harvey Dent in it, but he's not a villain. Mm. But in in this one, it was the fact of they went, oh, people love villains, okay, and then they proper mm. sort of pushed all the marketing to the fact of hey, we've got Catwoman, hey, we've got the Penguin and stuff. It well was. 
There was Tracy Batman had the as well. That every mm-hmm. the Batman movie was sort of stuck to that. It's like it's a two villain movie. You're always going to split between two halves of a story. He's never just yeah. got one. It's always a duality between yeah. two different sides of what he's tackling. Uh, and, and it was always difficult because the problem is it it felt like sometimes they were like trying to do two villains and you're like, there's not enough time. Or like in other ones, like where they tried to do three villains and you're like, but nobody gets to do anything. Like, you know, <laughs> th- this true, one but... is like perfect. Like it, it, we get to see the penguin. We get enough backstory on him. We get enough backstory on Catwoman and Selena Kyle. And it, you know, I think at the cost of we don't really get much about Bruce Wayne, but who gives a shit about him? Yeah, really? well, well, I mean, I think Bruce Wayne's been covered enough over the years, and but at um, that point he had. He gets enough in the first one, I guess. In the first one, it goes more into who Bruce Wayne is, and then they're like, "Oh, yeah. well, you know that pocket cat one." <laughs> well, this isn't. This wasn't meant to. This is. This wasn't meant to be. Oh, sorry. It was originally meant to be a direct sequel. So at the time when the first one finished, um, Burton and. <laughs> Keaton hadn't signed up for anything else. That was it. It was just a one and done for them. And then the studios came in and said, we want to do a second one. And Tim Burton, to his fucking credit, was like, I will do it under my terms, under my conditions. The <laughs> script will be mine. The script, like I, I have complete control over everything. And Michael Keaton, if he returns, will get a shit ton of money. And Keaton was like, <laughs> How much money are we talking? And he went, <laughs> 11 million. And he went, they'll never give us 11 million. And he went, <laughs> here is your 11 million. <laughs> and because the studios were so desperate to have him back, have this duo yeah. back because of how well the first one had gone. Um, but Keaton didn't want a lot of dialogue. All right. Okay. So I think that did of- help with uh, the Catwoman and Penguin getting their characters more mm-hmm. established yeah. as well because it's still only two characters rather than having to add a third in. Yeah, yeah. Why but like, what, lots what of the, dialogue. What? Yeah, really what the big Acton Keaton does do? <clears throat> it's pretty good though, because like mm-hmm. you get like a lot of range out of his Bruce Wayne. He's even like a little flustered by Selena Kyle being like, <laughs> like, trying, like yeah. <laughs> when she kind of like <laughs> when she comes back the first time. Um, I've, seen, no, that, that, I've seen an interview of him seeing it. It's like ninety percent is the suit. So yeah. he didn't have to see anything. He just had to stand there and be Batman. And it works. <laughs> it does. And I didn't realize how much of a pout Michael Keaton has until last <laughs> night when I was re-watching it. I was like, he doesn't normally pout like that, does he? But Is it not because the mask like stretches your face, like like pushes well, your well, face then, in a bit? Well, <laughs> <laughs> when it must push it back and then push it in because these lips are like perfect. It's like me when I take a photo. The minute that camera hits me face, me pouch comes out. <laughs> Thinking about mistletoe too much. <laughs> <laughs> so they said that there wasn't that it wasn't going to be. Or originally they wanted it as a, a direct follower on, but then Tim Burton obviously got his own way. But there is some aspects of that still left in the script. Mm. Especially yeah, when he talks about Vicky, his his ex, yeah. Uh-huh. Which I like. I feel like we didn't really care about like at the time no, in the well, movie. Vicky Vale is like my most hated Batman character <laughs> because the entire film, all she does is this all the time. <laughs> she pulls the side of the head at everything yeah. that happens, and like that's the only Who? acting range we had. Photo journalist, or, or is it that the part was basically be a pretty woman? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Maybe Tim Burton's like sort of you know like Tarantino with feet. Maybe Tim Burton likes women with concussions or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh, hold your head, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Does anyone remember their first viewing of this? I can remember a very early viewing of it. Um, it would have definitely been on TV though, or like you know home video. I had the tape in my house, that's why I've stared at the box enough to know what the poster <laughs> looks like. But um, I can vividly remember like sitting watching this with like my granddad on like a sleepy mm. Sunday afternoon, like type of thing, and but like shying away from like the, the horrible Danny DeVito scenes, oh, <laughs> like God. just like just not wanting to look at him really. Like he's absolutely, as Alfred says, grotesque <laughs> in this yeah. movie. Um, it's like it's super interesting take on the penguin though because this isn't what you normally get uh, for penguin. No, but I do love how they put the poster of like the comic book penguin in there. Yeah, it's, it's like a nod to it because Tim Burton hijacked it and went. Yeah, I don't care what the law is. I don't care what the comic yeah. book is. No, 
he 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 has penguins working for him. He is part bird, <laughs> and he does all this. And they're like, "No, it's a, it's a gimmick because he wears a suit and a top hat." And they're like, "Shut up!" Yeah, shut up! He's it's a like, penguin. A bird. It's he's like um, a circus, and you're like, "Okay." Yeah, it's like a mob nickname that he's like yeah. reclaimed, obviously over time, yeah. being like a psychopath. Well, but um, yeah, like, can you remember your first watching Sammy? It probably was when I first found Tim Burton, in all honesty, because, mm -hmm. you know, Batman didn't cross my path until I really think when I met Anth and I watched Batman Begins for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that like, started my kind of love affair with the Batman. I oh, see so you um, watched one of the worst ones first. <laughs> I really like Batman Begins. Please don't. No, don't no, I'm kidding. no, no, it's me. That's the, the outlier on that opinion. <laughs> and I know it. <laughs> Um, but I just, I, I, it's probably, I do remember watching it growing up because of obviously it was Tim Burton. It was and pretty it's... massive at the time as well. Yeah. Like, and, and this had toys, like this had so many toys. Oh, I've, got stuff so, like that. I've got a little, I've got a it little bit 15. of the toys. <laughs> well, I... It's yeah. like those, uh, the, the uh, toy makers were struggling with stuff like uh, the penguin to <laughs> actually come up with a toy. But it's like, <laughs> this is a 15. Yeah. He's got like because... black blood coming out of his mouth. It's because they were that he has the umbrella he uses to lure <laughs> children. You know? they, couldn't, they couldn't use the image of Danny DeVito as Penguin. Kenner refused to use the image. So what yeah. they did, they used the original Penguin from the Adam West Batman to oh, yeah. use... And You're a wrecking and... machine! <laughs> <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, that, that guy was actually originally cast to play his oh. dad... Yeah. Yes, oh, uh -huh. was, right, okay. But ill health stopped him from doing it, and that's when he went to his, his... dad's. His dad's Pee Wee Herman, right? Paul, Ru oh, yeah, yeah. It's Paul Rubens and Diane Sigler, who are from um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, them two were um, them two were kind of like little partners in in crime. So, and I love the fact that they use Pee Wee as his dad, but I do like that they were, that's where they were originally heading. Was to use him from the original Adam West one. Yeah, the thing with the merch and everything like that. Like that's a big controversy of the movie of it being one of the biggest <sighs> failures of its time because of the over oversold the merch, not knowing what the yeah. movie was going to be. And it was kind of like, what do you mean it's got BDSM? What do you mean it's got like I want to <laughs> like sorry, what, we can't put in a happy meal anymore. <laughs> like, what what are you doing? <laughs> Wait, is that though? Because I, I remember when the the first time I saw it was probably um you know it, on TV, but I remember back when they censored stuff, and I know for a fact that the bit where Shrek dies and you get to see his electrocuted corpse that was <laughs> not on the BBC. No, that wasn't on ITV. I think it was, and it was like that whole thing. So I didn't know he died. I assume yeah. he died because he gets electrocuted. But all you see is Batman sort of you know looking through it's, stuff, and then he it's just comes away and you're like, okay. No, it is worse than I remember because like when I saw it this time i was like oh holy crap that's just like a charred corpse but i think in my brain i was like it's like a skeleton you know like a cartoon electrocuted yeah. skeleton like home alone but like no yes yeah. <laughs> see why wasn't that the happy meal toy that's what i want to know about. oh my gosh it reminds us of mario when she gets electrocuted yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely it was going around a lot in the the mid 90s well, um, the she did it was brutal electrical. did anyone have any of the toys that they can remember because obviously there was like the batman figure but i'm pretty sure as sammy said some of them were just remolds of like yeah. the animated series like toy I line remember and stuff getting some uh, like being in primary school and it's like one of those like toy swap days you bring a toy in oh, yeah. and, take another toy. <laughs> and no, someone I never, had I never participated in that lead one was having mine <laughs> <laughs> can it we was... take it out of the box no <laughs> it was like a little Batmobile. It was the Keaton Batman. I can't. The third was that I like scooped up. Where I was like, because I, I watched the movie, I became obsessed with it. And like, I kick myself now because those toys were just going to a charity shop somewhere. And I was oh, a yeah. kid, and I'm like, mm. they'd be worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> like, they were quality toys for um, um for like I think like Christmas ninety five ish. So like this was like a few years after the movie came out. Um, I got this Super Nintendo Batman Returns game, which is an yeah. exact retelling of the movie. It even has like the intro, like the penguin scene with like, you know, them dumping them in the river oh, and the same music. Like, so and the, horrific. And the baby crying is like, ex is that like the same sample? But also the, not a happy the, meal toy. No, but the, the toy I had that, that they'd clearly like sanded all the edges off was like, I had this little racetrack thing and like you got a Batman car and you got the, the duck mobile, like his duck <laughs> tank. Um, his rubber duck thing oh, and it was like a race track where you were supposed to like <laughs> set them off at the same time and see who won uh the penguins one was faster i think because it was a lot heavier 
So like I feel like that's like whoever picked the Batmobile in that situation or is that just me? I feel like no bag bagsy the dog thing. <laughs> it looked so good, but there was no like horrible penguin man in it or anything. Um and it was like, yeah, they're having a fun race, like not not like a death race through the sewer, like <laughs> it, the actual end it doesn't the end with the Batmobile through the, the duck rushing. <laughs> well, Lee, when did you watch first watch it? Because I'm intrigued by your answer. Oh, I honestly don't know. I definitely had it on VHS because oh, I do nice. remember the cover as well of the three heads yeah. that he was mentioning. But it probably would have been when, I'm, like, not long after it first came out, I would ah, guess. Right. I didn't realise you were a bit of a Batman fan, to be honest. I, I love the films. Um, mm. I've read a few comics, but not enough to be a comic Batman fan. I wouldn't say um, I'm like totally enamored by the comics. Like I've read either. a bunch. Like I've read the ones that people tell you to read. You know, like all the sort of the heavy hit like graphic yeah. novel storylines. But it definitely seems like more of a fun like animation or movie thing for me, mm -hmm. where I much prefer like it in motion. <laughs> Oh, don't I mean, get us wrong. When I do get a good Batman run, though, I do absolutely love it. But you're yeah, right, I, I I went through a Frank Miller phase and. Oh, I hate Miller. <laughs> 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 just because he's like, just because of his like, you know, out like worldview, <laughs> like that he puts in all of his stories. <laughs> I mean, I, I find it, I find it really difficult with Batman because obviously, like everyone always does the whole Marvel versus DC and stuff, and I just, I'm not fussed about Batman. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. he's one of the what is it called the justice league and i'm like why have they got this random guy in the justice league i know it's batman but you know all the rest of them have he's the smartest random guy but then you always have people <laughs> being like oh but he's the most powerful and you're like he's not <laughs> you know his power is wealth uh but yeah but it's it's that idea of just like i love the tim burton batmans and i love the animated series batmans and they're yeah. not really batman in the grand scheme of stuff so you end up having loads of people who are like oh i love the comic batman i love the sort of this and then you're like oh shit i i i literally just enjoy like burton's kind of vision of it or you yeah. know the cartoon vision because this guy is not this guy's not a detective at all <coughs> like my no, batman no. he's no. like he's like i'm gonna show up in the batmobile with like every gadget under the sun and i'm gonna like punch some clowns <laughs> but, like where do they the come from like we, the tim burton batman's never attempt to explain any of that we don't get lucius no. fox we don't get any kind of oh yeah i i worked this out myself because i'm a mastery at this it's just going nope he just has them <laughs> he just a lot, has of, the stuff is, a lot of the stuff as well is just him and alfred seem to come up with it like yeah. like you see them in this one when the when the sabotage and the the like broadcast and they're just sitting there with the little headphones on being like D -d 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 -d. we're working on the computer <laughs> together <laughs> um but yeah like uh sorry i kind of i think i would went over said always there but the intro is absolutely beautiful mm. for this movie like down to like everything like the music the atmosphere the, the it's a horrible so story tim burton, isn't it yeah, yeah. like yeah. like the first film i don't really think it's much of a tim burton film the 89 one it looks like it came straight out of a comic book yeah like all of all, all, all that the he sets was, and everything or that he was told and to do like blockbuster style rather yeah, than his it's, style yeah exactly it's but, so studio centric the first one and this is the conditions he had for to re well to return stripey <laughs> clowns flying <laughs> out of I, will, I will i will have my aesthetic <laughs> i will have <laughs> i'm going to take over the whole warner brothers studio to do my aesthetic Excellent. um yeah. within the, within the first like 10 seconds of batman returns you can just watch that 10 seconds and go Oh yeah, this is a Tim Burton movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's That's Pee Wee Herman though. dressed as a rich person. <laughs> <laughs> you leave Pee Wee oh, alone. Oh, cats be You know okay. how much? You know, you know, like how once the penguin like comes onto the scene proper, like are we to believe that is definitely what happened, or is this like, oh. or is this part of the penguin's like lie, or did this is this part true? I think it's all true because it's Burton. So he's yeah. like, no, no, rich people genuinely do this. You know, it's just. I, I, I think it's, it is like true. It's but... another, like another warped imagination, like another warped part of his imagination that he's kind of like fabricated. Yeah. But it's not framed by anything. Like, you know, for the yeah. viewer, this is just it, like the start of the movie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I, so I, I guess this part is true. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I want to mention though, like after me and Goodwill on the trek on the Trekking Up North podcast have been covering the Star Trek films, one of the biggest he things I dislike about them is that they don't actually 
have a proper opening credit sequence. Yeah. All of them literally just go, here's a black screen and we'll put the words up for five minutes and then the film starts. This is a perfect example of how you integrate a credit sequence into mm. a film telling us a story where we have this wonderful montage of showing like, you know, him going into the sewers. We get all the things. We get the wonderful imagery coming up. It, it tells a story and it's this no moment in this entire film is wasted. Every no. single mm -hmm. bit of this film is joyous, which is why I desperately wanted to talk about it. But it's, you know, and then you compare it to other films where you get like dead air or you get like, oh, well, that was that seem necessary? Like, I yeah. can't think of anything you could cut out of this film at all, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and also, like, have you noticed, like, the the original score obviously they do the batman theme over the opening like titles credits and stuff like have you noticed that the score is like wildly different like the the original stuff for this movie like like lee was saying is a lot more tim burton but they knew the fans wanted to hear like the batman theme so they definitely had to get it that in there but then that like fades away again and it's like okay now we're back to this kind of like christmasy you know like dark fantasy type music but it was but Danny Elfman didn't do the music for this. Did he not? I thought he did no. for Batman Returns. I'm sure I saw his name. I, I really I thought it was. To, I is, to look it's got um, motifs in it. It's it? very it is very Elfman, but do you know like um there's been a lot of stuff coming out recently about how composers have like people that they work with who just don't really get credited. So it's it's like you know, he might have had a My team. My apologies, it was Danny Elfman, but you're right, oh, yeah. he did have a team. It's just I could yeah. not for the light because last night I went on a um the makeup side of things was really bothering us because I couldn't find it. I know it's Stan Winston, but yeah. it's not Stan Winston, it's his team who mm. did it. And you um, wanted to like credit the right people. <laughs> I heard, that's yeah. right. And I just yeah. and I and I, the only thing I could find was um Ronnie Spector who did um, make up for this but didn't do all of it. She was actually nominated for um, an Oscar for Batman Returns. But it was V. Neal who was the makeup supervisor, who if anyone knows V. Neal's name, she is the makeup yep. on Beetlejuice. Um, yep. And Shane Mann, who did The Penguin, and his credits just fucking... Yeah. They, are, they are so many. But he, they're all part of Stan Winston's team. Um, and that's all I really could find because there was so many people who were involved in the makeup side of things. Wait, it's it's crazy, isn't it? Like, I saw wonderful pictures of uh, her the other day um, from, you know, so I think on Nerdy Up North, people were posting about Beetlejuice and stuff, and it basically mm -hmm. had her there doing the Michael Keaton makeup for yeah. that and just, like, seeing the process. But, um, no, like, my earliest memory of Batman, one of my earliest memories is my brother being obsessed with the soundtrack to the first mm. one, like the Prince mm -hmm. soundtrack. And that yeah. was on, it was that and uh, Pretty Hate Machine by Nine Inch Nails, like on loop for that like is a, a year and a half. Is a that's not kind of my soundtrack now anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and then obviously when this one came out, like the soundtrack was on heavy rotation as well, but it was obviously dramatically different. But the, the music's similar, like, you know, in terms of the actual themes and stuff, not the Prince mm -hmm. music. But obviously this one has Susie and the Banshees on with yeah. Face to Face, which is a fucking amazing track. <laughs> uh, and I just I just remember that like that's a core memory for me like the bat the Tim Burton Batman soundtracks and just no it it used to yeah. be a mass like the Batman soundtrack used to be a massive thing I don't know where like Batman got this kind of weird like thing in Hollywood where it's like no no he has to have a an album he has to have a song from like the biggest <laughs> Baby, band of the year. yeah Baby, do a kiss <laughs> yeah and then, or they, th then afterwards it was like now he needs now he needs a U two song and it's like okay. <laughs> And a full I, I think you too thought that Batman needed a U2 song to be <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did we think we needed one? <laughs> yeah, that's a, no, no one willingly thinks they want a U2 song. That's right? that's one of their only good songs in my eyes. The, uh, <laughs> Hold Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, blah, blah, whatever the one it is. <laughs> that, is a, that is a good song. And also Kiss From A Rose, I'm going to say a song on, on record is uh, just the greatest song of all time. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's won the Academy statement. Award for Chris. Song of all time. Uh, be before we I move on, I'm oh. super nerdy about this costume. Yeah, but like, obviously not mine that I'm wearing. The one in the actual movie because it's way better than what I'm wearing. Um, yeah, yeah, go that's not good. That's about the like. Oh, careful, careful! But goth girls in PVC, pull them oh. back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Selena wasn't a car. <laughs> 
<laughs> do, do we have some way to exercise him, Lee? Like, should we suggest demonetization? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> if, if I talk Sorry, about Jess. Facebook enough, if I talk about... <laughs> yeah, Who are Jessica, away. man? <laughs> Sorry, Jessica. <laughs> you couldn't oh, yeah. help it. No, this, um, I just read the trivia about the, the extent of what that outfit was. Mm. So it's old school latex. It's not like latex now, which is a lot easier to get on. She's actually suctioned into the outfit, vacuum so packed. put it on, then vacuum her into it, and it was yeah. like a limit of how long she could be in the outfit before she basically started to pass out. Oh, oh yeah. really? I thought you were going to say till the air like got back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and blew up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I was reading about say, that. No nice. one has put like a full like body piece on of latex, but it does. It over time, it starts to get tighter and tighter with the heat. But it's seeing like, her is like it's heavy duty latex as well. Mm-hmm. It's always been really curious of kind of for its time having a designer that good to make yeah. a piece that movable and everything. Um, I mean, I think all oh, Keaton's is latex as well that you see. Yeah. The 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 Batman's the Batman suit. I watched the because if you go on the Prime to find this movie, it takes you to the evolution of the bat suit. Okay. But <laughs> has starring okay. Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, Michelle Pfeiffer, and I was like, you crafty bastards. Do I, <laughs> do I have to watch this in order to be able to watch the movie? You don't, <laughs> by the way, it's not there. But I did end up watching this um, little 13-minute ditty on the evolution of the bat suit, and the bat, ugh, Keaton's suit is probably one of the most iconic-looking, but un... What's the... Paul actually said the best word yesterday... It's just, it's not workable. Like, you can't work in that suit at all. Yeah. It, you can't move around. You can't fight anyone. It's just for <laughs> look alone, and that's well, it. Well, set the joke about the fact he couldn't turn his head, and he had to turn his entire body, like, any time. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he kind of just approaches people like this, doesn't he, the whole time? Because <laughs> like, he's yeah. not going to turn. He's like, Hands I'm just going to block both sides. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love that, like, the... The helmet can't be removed at all, so he just tears it off at the end. And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, that's no, interesting." I refuse to believe that you have designed all of these things you use when you asked this shit so, to do ergonomics. <laughs> so, like, that's the thing. So, when Keaton's suiting up, is it like, is it like an entire like overshirt that he has to like shove on, <laughs> <laughs> like, and put his head through? <laughs> I imagine like Wallace and Gromit moment, like he just pulls yeah. in the yeah. oh, and then his head pops <laughs> out. <laughs> 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 Imagine, to be fair, we can fully see Tim Burton doing that. That's proper Pee Wee's uh, Playhouse. Mm-hmm. Like just Michael Keaton going down a chute and getting dressed on the way by robotic arms. Well, doing it. That's, oh, that's doesn't that's how do that. Alfred walks in with a tray of talc, just like, oh, again, Master Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> It's a yeah, little bit. <laughs> I I thought that was gonna happen though when he opens the door and then suits are like he's got he's got yeah. already three assembled suits in front of him and I was like oh how is he getting into these is he just gonna like shoot himself <laughs> into it and then he walks into a wardrobe that obviously looks like it should have actual suits on it but it doesn't it has the Batman suit on it yeah. and he's like which one will I pick today <laughs> oh I'll have you and the one where I all the same my head <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the all suits are the same or do they have different things because it doesn't <laughs> seem practical exactly, to have them all the same they look I mean, exactly the, the same it's like mr bean's wardrobe <laughs> <laughs> yeah they sometimes like to hide easter eggs and that stuff but i don't know for sure it might have been like what the one of the original movie suits that were just like oh hung yeah up. just in there <laughs> but, i um, mean with the new flash of him reappearing again as that cracked up when he like kind of opens the closet to look at him like, it's gonna be a lot harder now to put one of those suits on just like Really should have thought this through. Like, mm. should have thought about easier suits at this age. Trying and to get back to, into one. He has to drive in it as well. Have you ever like had like a big coat on when you're driving and you're like, this yeah. is weird. you can't maneuver? It, it, do you know what? It, he's going to sit us down all? and the, the the suit's going to ride up a little bit, like too much. <laughs> he's going to have to keep adjusting himself and moving himself around. <laughs> it just all I keep thinking of when I see him thinking about him in the car is RoboCop. Definitely, he's, he's got, got knee bottoms on. <laughs> well, I'm doing the Picard maneuver all the time. <laughs> yeah, that is all this thing. All these top down. Picard is latex. Damn it! <laughs> it's um. I, what I do love though is like so like we get the intro and then the suit up. You know, like the bat mm. signal because the the giant Christmas That's... present explodes with dirty clowns. <laughs> into the A lot of as happens. dirty clowns. But how beautiful is that opening scene when you first see Bruce Wayne and the lights just shining yes. on his face and he does that whole movie maneuver of. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, it's it's not very conspicuous if he's got guests around, mind. <laughs> Bad signal sent to his window. Yeah, well, I, so. I I really like the idea though that like the the film lights Batman like it would light a Hollywood starlet. You know the yes. the classic yes. thing like we like we get with Morticia Adams where we get the beam of light across the eyes, and we yeah. get that with Michael Keaton like you know basically going, hey, he's not Batman at the moment, he's Bruce Wayne, but he's mm -hmm. always there, and you know it it's so clever, but it it feels strange. It feels strange having a man with that lighting effect. You know, and why was he sitting in the dark? Why he's fucking bad? He's a massive Why not? Uh, it's his vibe. Darkness, a... <laughs> no parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, is this what you like when the air boss is out of town? <laughs> <laughs> But like mm. what I what I do love about like when he first gets on the scene is it's it's just fucking go time. He's just like blasting yep. in on the Batmobile and tripping guys up with his like <laughs> gadgets. And then he just like shoots out and starts fist fighting people. There's like there's no like there's no stealth or like sneaking around. Like Keaton's Batman just like explodes on like every yeah. scene. <laughs> Wait, literally, and then then the whole sort of oh Batman's not supposed to kill, and I'm like I'm pretty sure that flamethrower guy did. dies. Yeah, yeah pretty, the devil guy. Pretty sure the guy with the maybe. Bomb it was very snowy <sighs> around. I would argue well, he, that all he had to do was just drop and roll. Stop like there's no, roll. there's no reason for him to be burning there. But what got me was the Batmobile. Who came up with the idea that the Batmobile could literally lift itself up and turn itself around? Because the time it took for it to lift <laughs> itself up and turn itself around. So much could have happened in that I, time. I think there's so much about the the Batmobile in this, like the gimmicks in this, where you're like, how is that ever useful again? Like the 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 thing he uses to trip the stilt walkers up. It's just like, yeah. when does what? that come into play? Yet? Like, you know, <laughs> Do we like... have stilt walkers in Gotham all the time? Yeah. <laughs> no stilt man's marvel ever. <laughs> but that kind of that, that adds to the campness of it all. It adds yeah. to the quirkiness of the movie. Just being like, okay, you'll never get me up here, it. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got a gadget for that. Um, can I ask a, a, a serious question? Where, what time period are you putting this Gotham in? Because the design, the clothing, the costumes all indicate to me 50s. Yeah. But Selena Kyle doesn't. She yeah, like she's 90s. very 90s. <laughs> It's difficult because I think they've got the preset, like what Gotham City is from the first film. And it's kind of mm. like this timeless 90s, 50s thing. But then what he tries to put in with Selena Kyle in this one is very modern, like pressures and mm -hmm. presentation of women. And therefore she becomes this kind of time, you know, like she she's not really in set in time. I always imagine it, though, as being like current day, like the 90s in Gotham City, but as if something in the past mm. changed. As in, like, what if technology had not gone yeah. as far kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Like, I, That's how I kind of see and it. Like, I'm like, what if we just settled in this wonderful Art Deco period for a hundred oh, years? Yeah. And it just, like, it just, like, gets built on top of it and gets higher yeah. and higher. Because there's, yeah. there's so many, like... Evolves. There's so many, like, crazy, like... It's obviously Burton-esque, like... Uh, skyscrapers and stuff, especially with that giant cat on, like, like the rotating cat. What is that? Like, cat? It's what just... does Shrek sell? I always I don't I know, was it's like, just his department station. store mascot. Yeah. <laughs> like, is he is he selling cats? Because I mean, I'm, I'm buying if he is. Can, on a, we're like, when you were saying this, and always about like the how like she feels modern, like, is that is that the most accurate getting home from work? like scene that's ever been put on film because oh, i think it's up there how she's yeah. just like stumbling around and being like, <laughs> <You> know, like... <laughs> it's the it's the when she meets batman for the first time and she just keeps on talking and yeah, then that dialogue yeah. just keep that dialogue follows her, in, follows her into her home i uh, any scene that has selena <coughs> in her house i fucking love yeah. I want that seat with all them teddy bears on it. Even the throw <laughs> that she had on the seat, the telephone, the voicemail, like, uh, the sign. I want it all. I love everything <laughs> about that. But it's the the fact that she's talking to her cats yeah. <laughs> and telling them that they need Hashtag to pay a rent, which I do, which I do to mine all the time because they live here <laughs> rent free. Relatable. 
I, I think it's <laughs> it's probably the most relatable Batman villain we've had. Well, it, I don't yeah. even know if she's a villain because obviously Catwoman's always shades of grey, and in this we well, only really see her be a bit of a dickhead. But yeah, I was thinking about justified this. Justified in a way. Like she, yeah. she has an origin story rather than the penguin being you lived in a sewer and your parents were dicks. Uh, yeah. Or like the Joker being like, you're a bastard and you're thrown in toxic waste. Became more of a bastard. <laughs> yeah, more of a bastard. <laughs> but no, I was I was thinking along these lines because I was like, all right, in the comics, she's normally like a literal cat burglar, and mm -hmm. like in this, she doesn't do a lot of burgling. Like, fair enough, she like turns over the uh, the department store, but that's more of like an act of terrorism. But like, I quite like that because it's as if they were it's if they were trying to modernize her, where it's like. Yeah, like cat burglars aren't really a thing. Nobody does like museum heists anymore. Like, well, would she? Like, would she have her? But well, would she have her transformation into Catwoman automatically? Go, I am going to be a cat burglar. Now. Exactly. She yeah, would it's more she realistic. Would test it, yeah, she would test it out. She would. She yeah. probably would evolve into the the burglar that we know Selena Kyle to be. Yeah. But now she's just. I feel like when she's in the department store, she's training. That's just her training yeah. ground. <laughs> but I, I feel like what we get in the animated series where she's very very much like an activist and she's very much a like sort of cat burglar and you know like a, a force for good but like, like in but the like also high great. society as well or yeah. at least can get in there yeah. i'd say that's this selena kyle in about 10 years time yeah. like this is very raw she's just you know being reborn as it were kind of thing mm -hmm. and you know and just well, you know, like they're the the initial steps of a serial killer where it's kind of sloppy and then later on it becomes refined and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's how I feel about Good Selena Kyle it. here. Like like I, I do I, love I, I do love her first like meeting with with like a guy like in the back alley where she saves that woman. Yeah. And then immediately turns on the woman afterwards. <laughs> it's like you give women a bad name. Just, at it's least as if she she's did like, it. But at least she did it in the best way possible instead of how Fucking Alicia Silverstone did it in <laughs> Batman and Robin because that was yeah. horrific. <laughs> um, I well, don't like... think Tim Burton's actually um, going for a cat burglar woman, though. Like, mm. it feels like he's gone, right, this penguin is... He's a penguin. He's half man, <laughs> half penguin. This cat woman, she's not a cat burglar. She's a woman. That's a cat. terms. Do you want to yeah. sit down and try and explain, like, metaphor to Tim Burton? <laughs> 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 he's not Excuse really me, a cat <laughs> person. And he's like... Cause she is <laughs> like, how how free how free is Selena Kyle in this film? Like she's just mm. going around doing whatever she wants. She's happy. She's carefree. Like it's just even like having like cat thoughts. Like sitting there and going like, oh, I think I'll take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> just doing cat things. <laughs> I, I think it's a thing. I think it does very well as a female written character. It's in a like predominantly just a male movie. Like the way they set her up, and it's all quite like it's just extremely relatable why she's still so popular. Like that mm. version in particular, yeah. the things that yeah. when she does come into the house and she puts the um, answer machine on, her mum's asking, like, when's she going to find a man? Did she get a better job? How sad is she that she still lives alone with her cats? And say like, all those pressures, <laughs> how yeah. disrespected she's within her job. And yeah. then that whole donning on, like you said, a full like kind of sexy BDSM-esque thing. It's just kind of like, fuck this shit. Like, yeah. fuck the man. <laughs> like, no, like you, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I can do. <laughs> but that, that's Pretty exactly much, it. That's, yeah. that's her story, that's isn't it? Level of freedom that kicks in of just like screw all the stigmas that are put upon kind of mm. what it is to be a woman, especially in Gotham, where it's just great. Um she's I don't know this about her I think like, there's a reason she, that particular version of Catwoman stands test of time. Because mm. most of the others haven't as much as what she does. Mm. You don't see as many people wanting to sort of get the iconicism of like the look or again how her apartment is done. The amount of people mm. I knew that got those LED lights and stuff. <laughs> I want those LED lights. <laughs> Ashed off the, 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 the perfect letters. That's the one that brings the best yes. with, I think. Of, yeah. Like kind of it's not just a sexy woman in an outfit, it's that's like kind of full female power of like I want to be that bold. <laughs> like, <laughs> Isn't it, isn't it the idea of like, you know, she's the most relatable villain because most women say that they've been in that situation. Like she is a very, her origin story is basically going, 
yeah, you're a woman trying to grow up in a male society and everything is against you. Everything is a hoop to jump through. Whereas the penguin is slightly less relatable because I don't know how many <laughs> other people, may, obviously I'm in this list, but who grew up in a sewer uh, and wanted to kill the firstborns of everyone in the city. I mean, I that's know, niche, but, but you know, I do relate, but... The only tiny bit of context that sort of is like, but it's like a tiny little snippet right at the start, the two prams crossing each other. Mm. And the theory, the other one is Bruce with his lovely right. parents and his lovely oh. pretty prom. Oh. And then there's Oswald's parents running the other way and it's like they both could have been the same guy, but look what happened. They could have yeah. been Can I say something really depressing as well? That the penguin in this movie is actually younger than me and probably most of us because it says it says 33 years later <laughs> not so much me then <laughs> all that sewer water that's what it is um, uh. I'm apparently on the edge of the penguins so. <laughs> can, I, can i ask about if we can go into the penguin now because he is such a fascinating person but the shape of the penguin that's it's a, a that's lot a of suit. padding that's a suit right the, yeah. i mean it's obviously it is to put it on him and it's amazing like all the neck piece and everything to get him all into it but what's going on with all the lumps and bumps in the wrong places it's i just mean I just, obviously <laughs> it's obviously modeled after a uh, last from gate said on our way to the job center <laughs> in our <our> jeggings <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> i hope our demographic is not gate said female people <laughs> please <laughs> don't know how use windows. <laughs> wow <laughs> Um, it took him three hours every day to get the makeup on. Ouch. <laughs> and what he decided to do, he was really top secret though. He, because they did, they did not want him to get leaked at all. His image could not, he couldn't even discuss it when he went home, what he actually looked like. He had to make sure <laughs> that every day when he went home, he went home with no makeup on. So what he used to do what was. What if he left the nose on one day? <laughs> yeah. Honey, I'm home. And he's just. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ah. So he used to bring in, he used, because he he was, you know, he was happy. It, it, it's Danny DeVito. He's really like, he's the nicest guy in Hollywood. And he wanted to be comfortable while he was doing it. So he used to bring his home comforts into the trailer and he brought his laser disc in with a mirror so he could sit and watch his movies in the mirror while they were doing his face. So he could just oh. be content and happy. But this is the first thing I have watched Danny DeVito in that is not Frank. Reynolds. <laughs> okay. In a long, long yeah, time. I was going to say in a long time. In a it's, long time. But, it, but it's almost Frank Reynolds, though. It's so Frank Reynolds. <laughs> Some of the noise that he makes is just yeah. like, I'm listening little, to Frank. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, so like this, this would have been the first time I ever saw Danny DeVito, I think. Um, but I do remember my parents telling me, like, oh, I used to be in a show called like Taxi or whatever. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, and this was like, to to me as a child, this was like absolutely horrifying. I had like nightmares about this penguin because he's just so like unpredictable and like creepy. Like like when he just bites that guy's nose, and it's just like it's too oh, much. It's <laughs> oh, that is horrific! Wow. It's so Hannibal Lecter. I was like, yeah. Jesus. There's there's a few times in movies that it kind of make us uneasy for, um, just. Like to a point where I can't watch it anymore and I have to revert my eyes. There's a scene yeah. in uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon that does that where he's literally just he's just in the background. You can just see him and he's, his eyes are just above water but he's there for fucking ages and it makes us so uncomfortable that I have to like, can we just get past the scene? There was one moment in it with this, with Danny DeVito on the yeah. television mm. when he's doing the, the TV interviews and you're looking at him through a television screen and I'm like that is fucking horrifying. Like, yeah, I, like it crossed need... the line for you. <laughs> like, I need this to end now. That's too real. <laughs> Get him off. <laughs> hey, I think he's genuinely like. I think that the thing that stayed with me the most is him eating the raw fish. That is. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was literally. I was eating. I was eating my tea yesterday when I rewatched this, and I just had to look away for the whole scene. I literally. Yeah. I don't look at it. As soon as he gets given the fish and he starts going down the stairs, I look away until I know <laughs> the nose biting thing is happening. I'm like, oh, cool, blood. Yeah. But I'm okay with that. It's nope, so damn. fish thing I can't do. It's so Nobody in that right. room is fizzed as well. Well, I, I don't know. I was, people. Well, he's a I was trying to watch some of the reactions this time, and that guy that he bites is does kind of like have a fake sort of smile on when he's like coming down. He's <laughs> like, 
<laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> the the horrific moments are always like covered up by jokes as well. So even being like seven year old when we're watching it, it was still yeah. like, oh, great. He bit the guy's nose because it's like, well, at least my nose isn't gushing with blood. <laughs> or like when he shakes the guy's hand at the beginning. Oh, because the Walton's hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, Sleep. it was a seventh hand. Hey, I'm Fred's <laughs> hand. <laughs> <laughs> How, how disgusting <laughs> is the penguin? Co considering that, like, you know, considering that, you know, like the penguin in Batman lore is basically a very rich uh, yeah. gangster and very mm. refined. And then in this, they're like, no, he is no. the most disgusting thing. Like, he literally, like, jokes about, like, feces and stuff and, like, mm. you know, like, living in a sewer and drinking, like, sewer water and all of this horrible stuff. And then obviously eating the fish. It's so weird. Like, and I'm pretty sure he has like stains on his. He his does. Hair, every, but he does everywhere. have butter stains but later does, on. But he does. He <laughs> tries though. When especially when he's trying to find out his parentage, he tries to live up to Gotham's way of like how they how he thinks he should be presented to yeah. them with his suit yeah. and everything. And it's then when he comes down and he does his whole, "I'm no son of Gotham. I'm the Penguin. Call me." The... And I was like, "This is such a Frank That's Reynolds why... moment." <laughs> like That's he's having like that. Though. Like, like when they're there. trying to get everybody all refined and everything, it just breaks loose of that kind of mm. like, no, I'm not this. Like, I am yeah. that grotesque. It's in your yeah. face. Like, what is going on? But it, it just felt um, like such a Frank Reynolds good. moment. <laughs> mm? like, there's horrible moments where he's just an absolutely creepy pervert. Um, yeah. I think yeah. When bring him in, and there's a woman, and he's like, oh, I could get near that. And the same with <laughs> I'd like to fill her <laughs> void. <laughs> yeah, he tries to put a. Teach her my French it. flipper trick. What, oh <laughs> what's the line he says to the the woman where he's just like i've oh, forgotten he said when he's given the woman the button and it's awful it just yeah like, you know you're a very hot young person that uh you know that an old person would like to get to and you're like this is mm, no this, is, this awful. is just wrong and um, did you know did you know <laughs> the penguins oh, it's are actually facts. real are actually real penguins not the ones at the end. There's a, there's they, a few. There's are, like three there different types of penguins. Not, did they not the train ones... those to drag them into the water? Did they not? So no, these penguins the are actually... The, so the ones at the front, obviously a lot of them are all <laughs> digitally put in later to kind of make the mass of them all. But the ones at the front, they are real penguins. Uh, they were brought over from England. They wanted king penguins. Um, and they wanted a specific breed. And a, they came from England. So they had them shipped over from England. These penguins were tread like fucking royalty so <laughs> they had ice rooms created for them to where they would they'd constantly be at a certain temperature they were fed the most luxurious fish <laughs> ever like they these these penguins were so they were so nervous about anything happening to them they would oh tread, yeah they would tread like fucking stars as every penguins room should be yeah every room <laughs> yeah. that they're in danny devito was I was reading that he was totally fine with the temperature of the room when he was filming with the penguins because these were these were the stars. He was yeah. nothing at this point. It was <laughs> them who was the who needed to be taken care of. And then they all went back to their their sanctuary. They were all um, but, rescue birds. But yeah. Sinoise is right though because there is like there is penguin puppets. There is yes, there is there is animatronics. There is people in suit penguins. Yeah. The, the, and, the small, and, the small and people in suits. I bet they were treated like shit. I bet Tim Burton mm. put them in a cage after every suit. <laughs> I bet he actually put them in <laughs> the frozen room with the penguins. He just beat is them this one of those moments we need to put allegedly? But, oh, yeah, but um but did you see, see you know the ai subtitles do that. did you see it did you see at the end though when they were doing the missile thing that there was like there was like 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 sub ps1 level like penguins just like yeah. rotating around on the screen <laughs> like instead of having any animations they were just sort of turning and stuff like that so, i loved it me i was dead interested like how the i had the... someone about dying to be able to get in the role and apparently it's that you, uh, jack nicholson rang him and he was like yeah. asking you to do batman he was like yeah i don't know he's like do it he's like the money i made off that first one he's like do it <laughs> yeah. he's like, there is they, the they had mess. nobody they had nobody else in mind for penguin by the way it was <laughs> always no. going to be him he was even a year of... before it was came out yeah exactly <laughs> and then he was like oh i didn't even know that but the original cat woman was annette benning um but she fell pregnant and then michelle pfeiffer was cast straight afterwards and she says it was the greatest pregnancy of her life <laughs> <because> it... <laughs> 
I, I have to say, someone though, someone else went in for it because I was watching some um, videos earlier on, and they show like her audition of her going to meet Tim Burton, and it's the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Who is it? Because she's, like, she's done her eyes. It's like, look, I already have the cat eyes. She was like, <laughs> I went in, she was like, and I thought I was going to get un- like jump up on his table or try to go under the table so I could be like a cat. And you're like, I can see why you didn't get the role. <laughs> God, it just. <laughs> I know I'm going to like. Sounds like an X Factor it. audition. Yeah, Tim Burton's casting always, couch. <laughs> I'm taking it back to Always Sunny again, where D is the um the oh, cat God, on, yes. the, <laughs> on the on the um, one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she fucking realizes it's an actual flea collar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know when Sorry. you know when like Always Sunny redid like Lethal Weapons. They should have redone Batman because yeah. like, all of these guys could have been perfect. <laughs> it would have been absolutely amazing. But I like, think it'd be hilarious to do it, but then have like Danny DeVito not as the penguin. As yeah, Batman. him playing as like Max Red or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh my Charlie god, yeah, Danny DeVito is Batman. Well, <laughs> Max, is it Max Shrek? Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He predates the Green Shrek by quite a few years. <laughs> um, well, he was. Tim Burton was very, very nervous about Christopher Walken being cast as, and kind of like wanted to steer away from him. He's and when a bit he was asked, well, when he fairness. was asked, well, when he was asked why, oh, wow, he spent, he, oh wow, yeah, he like, wow, he's, he's, a he's, shit. <laughs> he's just, he said he was really, he was actually terrified of him. And um, so Tim Burton well. didn't. Tim Burton didn't want to have anything to do with him. And then when they got him in to read some lines, and he went, "No, that's it. That's him." He is for all it's Christopher Walken, and you kind of have like an, you know what you expect from him. Yeah, this is such a wooden performance for him. Like, that's what he, I thought. Yeah, he does no. He couldn't. He, he could have hammed it up a little bit. I. I he doesn't know. do I'm... his Vulcan voice. Voice does he? He's not like, oh wow, it's the Batman. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay? Anyway. <laughs> I, I'm going to argue that I'm a massive fan of Christopher Walken in this movie because of all the things we're saying. Because it's the idea of, I think he needs to be the cold villain because there isn't one. He, yeah. he needs to be mm-hmm. the cold corporate guy rather than Christopher Walken. Because if he was Christopher Walken, I think it would just be Jack Nicholson from the first one. You know, it would be that kind of thing. And I like the idea that he is literally just this kind of, okay, I'm being blackmailed, okay, I'll help this guy, I'll just kill this woman, and it makes it more threatening that you've got this out-of-this-world insane penguin, you've got, like, you know, the neurotic, like, Selena Kyle uh, and whatnot, and then you just have him who's just, like, yeah, he's probably the most dangerous one out of all of them. <laughs> you know, I kind of, I, yeah, I, 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 I like, I like what you're seeing, um, it's just, I don't know why, just, it, in watching it, Looking back now, when you're seeing it, yes, that makes total and utter sense that he he needs to play it <coughs> to a point where it's it's he's just not interested. Like when Danny DeVito is like pulling out all these things that he could blackmail him with, he's got an answer for everything until obviously the hand <laughs> appears. Yeah, I do love like, that when he's like, you know, if those documents do exist, and that's not an admission, <laughs> I would have to shred it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just such he, like he, a businessman line. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's exactly it. It's, how middle, cold it's, he is. it's almost like they forget about him at one point when in the right. Like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. There are certain yeah. points where he sort of becomes a bit pointless in the movie until the sort of need a scene with him. He's a weird character that just sort of always feels really distracting. I watch it, I'm kind of like, I felt it was yeah, meant I to do he, something, but nothing but he, ever he, really happened. He feels he, like more of the architecture of Gotham. Like, he is part of what Gotham City is as a kind of setting, rather than yeah. being the plot, maybe, you know? I don't yeah. Know. He is cold and wooden, but he does also have the most human moment out of anyone in most of the Batman films. Is that when he likes son... a cup of coffee at the start? The, when, no, when the Penguin's trying to uh, take Chip, is he son called Chip? <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, oh no, take me instead. And he's like, given his own life for his son to survive. For his Which... giant muscular son. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go and find out who his son was because that didn't face. Have to. Well, I did. Yeah. I did. I, face... I googled it as well. I'm pretty sure it's for different reasons, Sammy. <laughs> his face is so interesting. I was like, "What have you been in before?" And he played uh, Leatherface in the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Zangief in Street Fighter. <laughs> My God, I know who it is. He's awesome. That's oh my word like, I, 
I rewatched. I was talking to you about this, wasn't I, Jake? About like uh, rewatching Street Fighter at, uh, yeah. at Christmas and just being like, Zangief is the most beautiful man on the entire planet. So that's who it is—the oh, same that's guy. Him. Yeah, it's the same guy. I know it is. He. <laughs> I feel like you've same got a story. One of the most horrific guests I have met at a con. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> Really? Um, as in scary, as in like <laughs> creep well, horrible, creepy. Oh just nasty. Just not pleasant. Just not oh, pleasant. damn it. Why is it always the pretty I ones? To do right, podcast, fucking... But afterwards, Sammy, I'll explain to you the story. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. No, <laughs> yeah, like that's that's the that is the problem. I mean we're in con season, but that's the problem. Yeah, Don't really meet your heroes, season, everyone. <laughs> yeah. As well. I think it's a street fighter, but I didn't know if he was in that movie. Yeah. Um, no, no, it doesn't. It, I did obviously never looked into it, but it does not seem like the same guy and totally different performance. But Lee yeah. Sammy, you didn't have to look him up. I just <laughs> looked at his face and I know I was looking at his face and I goes, God, you've got such an interesting face. I'm gonna put you a are... leather face mask on him. That's how interesting <laughs> he looks. And then I was like, Oh, it's the remake. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Oh, yeah, never mind. It. Jokes it is... as well. Cameos in the Batman movie. Really? Uh, Doug Jones is the clown. Yes, you know, actually he has the clown. clown. Yes, He's like, thank you. And like runs well, away. I think right. that's yes. okay. The scariest thing, not to just dis- take away from uh, Doug Jones, but uh, recently we had we were reviewing an episode of Trekking, uh, which had uh, Vincent Scavelli on, who mm-hmm. is known as one of the greatest character actors in all of American cinema, and he is literally the guy, the, the member of the clown gang with the beard and the monkey. And oh yeah. He gets two lines, I think, in this entire film, and it's ludicrous because he is in the opening credits. He gets two lines in the whole movie, but because he's so famous as a character actor, he he's up there with like sort of yeah, you know, oh, Michelle Pfeiffer and stuff, and you're just going yeah. Like, cause I think I can weird. remember one of his lines at least because isn't he the one who's like, "Hey, boss, there's somebody here to see you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but the he... scene with the monkey took. A, almost a day out of shooting because the no, monkey... I would have I would have cut that scene. You know when Sonoy's you were saying there's so, no cut scenes. Like if that monkey so, was taking an entire day of set time, yeah, no, no, because he was is... terif- he was terrified of Danny DeVito, <laughs> so they ended up having to the monkey wouldn't work with Danny DeVito, so they ended up having to kind of because they need him in the shop for him to hand the picture well... to. No, was Danny DeVito, DeVito in makeup, or is it just Danny DeVito? <laughs> Dan- he got in- he got interviewed on Graham Norton. Uh, Danny DeVito, not the monkey. Um, <laughs> but oh, did it, 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 it tried to bite his dick off. <laughs> <laughs> Hold like on, the, the monkey, monkey lunged at him and started biting at his crotch. <laughs> Yeah, the monkey was biting okay, Danny DeVito. Really, if it was Danny DeVito that tried to bite the monkey's oh dick God. off, I'm like, <laughs> but <laughs> luckily, the fucking <laughs> luckily, that was a thick suit. I can just imagine Danny DeVito like Frank though, just be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like get it off! Get... <laughs> <laughs> Try getting like a baseball bat or something, yeah, trying to get it off. Umbrellas out. out. So, <laughs> Charlie, before we like, get the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> before we came, before we came on, I was t- I was talking to you guys about how Bob Kane is kind of in the Batman movie is like in a, a bit of a like a tiny tiny way. The monkey scene is the Bob Kane moment. The piece of paper that he hands over, the writing on it is Bob Kane's. Oh, that's pretty cool. Because yeah, I did so notice that, it was nicely stylized in the bat yeah, note. <laughs> it's it's Bob Kane's handwriting. He wrote that note, and they kind of look put little nods into him like that in the try to in every move. Even though they don't do it for Bill Finger, they do it for him. <laughs> but I, I was I, I said as well. Um, we also get the lovely. Is it Bob Kane's wife? Uh, who gets a cameo? I didn't in. know this until you mentioned I, it. I'm sure it's a. I correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, guys. But basically, uh, it's she gets a cameo in the next two Batman's, like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, where she's yeah. basically gossip Gertie. I think her name is. She's yeah. the one who's like sort of, oh, Bruce Gotham must know, and it's awful. And he's just like, you're a cameo. You're obviously not an actor. You know, you are just. But uh, in this one, she's the one who's just like, you know, um, oh, I made a note. Um, oh yeah, he's like a frog who became a prince. It like, is her. Uh, just reading a newspaper, passing. <laughs> And I just love that they just went, okay, we'll just put your wife on screen, <laughs> you know, like for it's, this. Um, Elizabeth Sanders Kane. Uh, she's got a she's got a look though. Like when when they sort of recast her as that kind of like Joan Rivers type, mm-hmm. like celebrity gossip columnist type. Like 
she really fits that like when she like she's got like a, those big glasses <laughs> with like the diamond is it and stuff yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I always think, thought I, that was I, I think character. it's really shit. She looks but fantastic. Then, you know, I think it's really shit, but it's this idea of that was the most referenced thing between me and my friends for years. Yeah. <laughs> like whenever we're watching this, we're like, oh, it's her and stuff. And you're kind of like going, is it really shit if you literally reference it all the time? <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. actually, it's fine. It's part of the movie, yeah. you know? I love the fact that she's called Gothamite in the first one. <laughs> yes. I love that's That's. The, the do some interesting things with like the citizens of Gotham in this like you get to see like you know how how like we were saying before it's kind of stuck in the 1950s <laughs> they've got like yeah. oldie time like newspapers <laughs> like newspaper boys being like extra extra <laughs> penguin man in the sewers <laughs> 25 <laughs> cents <laughs> who was it that he's like who was it the paper boys almost like shoving the paper into the person's Alfred, face and he's I like think. why don't you want to know about the penguin man yeah and alfred's <laughs> like no, please stop telling me about the penguin throughout the entire movie <laughs> it, it's, bit, it's because they haven't invented like banner adverts yet <laughs> or like yeah or facebook it's... highlights this is my favorite Alfred, by the way. <laughs> I, 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 what? Or the everyone tag, Paul. <laughs> At everyone, Penguin Man. In the <laughs> yeah, have you seen the Penguin, penguin Man? man. <laughs> you bastard newspaper boy. <laughs> oh, no, Jake, I agree that he's one of the best for Alfred. Um, I think so, absolutely. Because yeah. like, he fits the kind of like father figure and like the sort of authority of the household at the same time but you never feel like he's mean to batman like his jokes are kind of like the cutting but like you can tell he cares still mm. <laughs> it's kind of what i love is like they're just daft little moments of humor like with him like when he brings him the soup yeah. just, like, just, oh god yeah and he's like, like, he's like, he's like he carries on eating like fair enough like yeah, alfred, yeah. Alfred, like, alfred endorses it <laughs> but he acted think... like a bit of a child in that moment when he spat it out and went oh what's that <laughs> i feel bad for alfred with that soup though there's bruce just like you're saying like oh like Didn't they it. care about each other no no like that before that He's just letting poor old rickety Alfred <laughs> go down that long staircase <laughs> with his hands full at like eighty year old. Like, oh. you can't put <laughs> a stairmaster in the bat cave, Lee. You know, it, it would ruin the whole aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Bruce is like gothic and dark, and then the stanner just comes down from the side. <laughs> Bruce is like, oh, let's go to the bat cave. You take the stairs. I'll go down the slide. <laughs> Oh yeah, like his, his Iron Maiden slide that he's got. <laughs> just imagine he's Alfred coming down this slide just dying. <laughs> it's like, oh well, and, and never mind. The super and fun, happy was slide. The end, that was the end of Alfred. No, but like, it, like, like, like that Alfred would never complain about anything though. That's the oh. that's the kind of guy he is. <laughs> how how many movies did Michael Goff do as Alfred? Was it he's three? up to Batman and Robin? Because he no, he's in. Is he not in? Like no, eighty nine Batman as well. I think 89. Batman and Robin's his last one. He's in the four, yeah, four, four. Because he, he yeah, never... he's in yeah. Kilmer. I can't never remember what Kilmer's is called. Forever. Batman Forever. Batman Forever. Mm. And then he, yeah, ba we did Batman and Robin. He's got he's got yeah. the first line in Batman Forever, I think, <clears> when he's like, "Can I persuade you to take a sandwich?" And he's like, oh, <laughs> <I'm> "Through." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's dying in the fourth one, and Mister Freeze gives him yeah. a little vile thing to McGregor syndrome. You watched yeah. it, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you and McGregor we syndrome. We, <laughs> we reviewed it, of course I watched it. I loved it. It's a fictional disease. I looked at it. <laughs> oh, that's it. Hello there. Here's the cue. Uh, um, take two of these and call me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> see, what, see what i mean though it's like people complain about batman and robin i'm like no it is an amazing film because it just is so ludicrous well, this is the film that they wanted to introduce robin in this is where tim yeah. burton had a fight with the studios because they were like we want this in we want that and then he went no i don't want to do that i don't want to bring and they were already starting to look at cast and this is where the is this where the marlon wayans comes into it yeah is this okay. movie there is a thing about the fact that he still gets a very small he amount gets of residual sections, yeah. 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 He just never appeared in them. He's got, yeah. he's got a costume fitting and things, and there's like concept art for what he would have looked like. But this is all but done like, behind. Yeah, he's he's never into playing a part in is amazing. Yeah. This is all. This is, I'm sure there's toys from as well. 
I've I've never mm-hmm. seen the toys, but it's not like I've oh, I've not been looking for them either. But I haven't I've just read that there is toys after this is the stu- this is the studio trying to and the probably the likelihood is they're probably been trying to sneak them in to every movie, but they started with Burton and he just went, Fuck no. We're it's not it's not anything. like Warner Brothers to be trying to meddle with people's movies, mind. <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah. yes. There's no way you could have had Robin in this movie. Like I say, there's no spare time at all yeah. you couldn't you would ruin it if you had another character in this movie and i like the slow burn like i know it's not what happened and they kind of went oh well it didn't quite make the billions we required so we'll get someone else to do the third one or whatever but like if it had continued the slow burn robin would have happily fit in the third one like you know yeah. of burton's movies and yeah, I, I'm really annoyed because the pacing of Batman, Batman Returns are so perfect well, for leading on and building the series as it goes. Mm-hmm. And then it all just fucks up and they end up being like, like Batman Forever is a mess, but but it and has it's, the and greatest it's Batman ever. In its way, you know? But it's it's PG as well. Like that's the, the it was like a massive step in a, a different, like a child friendly oh, direction. Well this, is, well, this is it. Well, no, this was the, this was this is why you don't get a Burton three four is because mm-hmm. the studios were like, we can't control him. We yeah. have a Butch Joel Schumacher on the other hand. He'll do anything. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, we may be able to get him on board because the studio wanted almost 90% of their input put in and this is why you get Batman Forever this is why you get Batman and Robin and this is why Joel <coughs> Schumacher was banging his head off a wall saying can I just have my movie I want yeah. my movie out there and that by the time it got to that conversation Batman and Robin had happened it completely ruined a franchise and Joel Schumacher never got to do the Batman he wanted to do because he was so inspired by Burton's, the first two, he wanted to combine them two mm-hmm. into his own. And I think it would have been something really magical. How, 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 many, if how Warner Brothers had this? the way, would we have just had Batman Forever as the second film? Because obviously they wanted to get Marlon Wayans in as Robin. And Billy D. Williams was set up to be Harvey Dent. Yeah. Two so what, think about what the actual Tim Burton script would have been for the third one? Like he had a lot of stuff put together for it. And Billy D. Williams was a weird one for them because basically his career was going down the pan. Like we're not sure if we really want to continue with him. Like we know he's meant to be two faced, but right now he's a bit Who is Billy D. I like the idea that they're like okay. Lando Calrissian. Oh, Lando, <laughs> I have I have Lando sitting behind me. Imagine if like, okay, he's hit, a bit like, problematic. A really we'll get OJ Simpson instead. In between <laughs> the first one, going to the third. Um mm-hmm. But no, there was the thing of Michelle Pfeiffer continuing on with them and trying to like a bit like how you could do the first and the second, like keep the same cast and sort of slowly introduce everybody else. But I think it was like everyone was kinda of, if Burton's not doing it, we're not doing it. Yeah, like, no. Like, this, kinda, this, I'm not doing it without him. I feel like the script. Oh, good, I think the studio want the studio wanted him out. I mean, getting 11 million for Keaton was a, <laughs> a bit push. Cheeky. But and even Michael <laughs> Keaton said they're never going to agree to it, and he went, yeah. "Watchers, they will," well, because they really were desperate to have him back, and he made so he set he set a bar for other directors who then the studios started to go no. We we're not we're not doing this. You're not doing this. Next time, Robin Williams, because he should have um, been the Riddler, and that's kind of like how Fuck his downfall happened. Quite good. It. He asked is he asked, he asked for fifty million to put him in. Wow! And they, they say the thing is they didn't consider at the time, like his agent and him trying to work it out with them. That obviously Jim Carrey was coming up, and it was like Jim we'll give him a cheaper. tenner. Big <laughs> 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 right now. I think Jim Carrey's a better Riddler because I don't like, like, I don't want to feel sorry for the Riddler or, you know, like, I think if it yeah, was... Uh, you love Robin Williams too much to have him as a bad guy. He, no, he no, I, I, good, I disagree. I but this was at the point where Robin Williams hadn't done his evil stuff. When we see films <laughs> later on, like Insomnia, when we see, see things yeah. like... Um, when I was photo photo. and stuff, mm. and we realised that... The whole thing with Robin Williams is because he can do like funny and amiable so well, he can do sinister incredibly well. And I think that would have been amazing as the Riddler, but I can't imagine him doing it in the mid nineties. The, you know? the Schumacher <laughs> version, no. He's <laughs> no. screwed out of playing the Joker because they sort of played him in a sense because they told Jack Nicholson they had him to sign mm. on to get Jack Nicholson to say, "Oh well, yeah, well, I'll take it." 
with no intention of ever giving it Robin Williams. And there's a really, um, there's an old interview from me. He's like, sometimes they'll play you and sometimes you get screwed in this industry. Mm-hmm. What he's being asked about is thing when he'd ever go to Batman. And he makes the joke. He's like, but maybe the Riddler. He's like, they didn't give me the Joker. But maybe they'll give me the Riddler later on. <laughs> but they really did screw with him. And then yeah. kind of screw them again, like a if, second time round. If they'd done a third one with like Catwoman <laughs> appearing like briefly, like not being a main character, because I think it'd be overcrowded, but like mm. Michelle Pfeiffer reprising the role, and then Robin Williams as the Riddler and uh, Lando Car. <laughs> Are we cast really? No. Uh, ca- kind of living. <laughs> that <Alrissian>. guy. Espen. <laughs> can yes. say it. <clears throat> Planet. Batman. Batman. Lando. Lando. As, uh, as Harvey Dent and Two-Face. And Burton's style. That would have been the greatest movie ever. Like, oh, yeah. it would have been, it's annoying it would have been very of the time as well. Like a, a real time capsule of a movie. <laughs> Wait, isn't <laughs> In this a good one, way. though? Isn't, isn't this one? Like, it, it's definitely, yeah. I mean, that's the wonderful thing, though. It is kind of timeless because, like we say, we're having trouble placing where it is, but it is very n- early nineties. <laughs> can know, I just say, like, it, 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 apart from apart from the CGI, which shows its age, like nothing else about the movie like shows any kind of like age or like you know, oh, this is embarrassing or anything. Mm. It, it's literally only the bits of CGI where they were maybe pushing a bit too far for like the time. Um, you know, like how like the Batmobile's like shield is like it's like that like shiny yeah. black like <laughs> CGI. And like I said, there's a few questionable penguins. <laughs> also, can, can I say can kind of overlook that? Can I say it's very strange that Batman has a radar that makes penguin and duck noises separately, <laughs> depending on <laughs> depending on what he's what he's tracking. And it's like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> they just planned for what if I need to track ducks at some point. <laughs> Every bird is represented. <laughs> oh god. Or or was um Alfred sitting there programming it in just to be like, you know, I've got, little, the noises? <laughs> I've got a little spare time here, so I'm going to make the program a little bit better. He's like I, coding as it goes. I, Alfred is like you on Twitch with OBS. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally yeah. just like, I'll put the sound effects in. Also, actually, no, I'm, I'm telling the lie. There is one part that is aged, and it's when Batman does a little <laughs> little record scratch thing when he's like, oh, yeah. CDs don't do that. His does. It's is upside it? down as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I wonder if it was a print CD. <laughs> but it oh, is gosh. it is it is amazing though. Like the the this film is so iconic. And it's like yeah. uh, well, I, I don't I sorry, can I talk about Michelle Pfeiffer a bit? Mm-hmm. A bit more. If you yeah. like How <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer is in this movie. Like she just steals every single scene she's in. And you you know, and then like Jess is saying in pretty much a torture contraption for the entire thing. Mm. And then, have you seen the videos online of her doing the whip thing? Where yes. she did in one all the whip thing, like whipping the heads off things. She did that in one take. And then it literally mm-hmm. just shows the extended thing. And then, like, the crew just being like, holy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I read, I was reading about her, um, her, the way that she prepared for this. And she did, what was it, six months of, um, different styles of karate, different styles of martial arts, um, yoga. She was just fully invested in doing this character that when it came down to the likes of the suit, yes, she fucking hated it, but at the same time realised that that is just as part of her character is what she is putting into her performance, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But they did say, someone jokingly said on an interview with her and her husband, did you take the cat suit home with you and show it? No, fucking burnt it. <laughs> <laughs> now, she like learned all of this karate and stuff, but did Selena Kyle do this no, in she did. Uh, what? spare time during a secretary? I feel, club? I feel like, well, I feel like Selena Kyle is the type of person who would take some form of classes, like in her spare time. She would, fa- she would do like. Like self defense classes and such like that. Then why did Batman have to save that save her from that man by pulling the wall into his head? How <laughs> why couldn't she have just done yeah. a karate? Because she's, she's, she's not confident. She's not because she's not confident yet. She hadn't snapped yet. She hadn't got a killer instinct. Uh, How unlocked. Tim Burton logic of a movie like this? It does that very Tim Burton esque thing. Like I don't generally believe that the actual like 
So he'd have the little glasses and a little shaky tray. <laughs> but he does that kind of supernatural esque as soon as all the cats get upon her, it's like mm. she's completely that's like almost she she got powers. Yeah, um, she becomes uh, a by cat. being like kind of brought back by the cats. Yeah, and gets like cat like agility. Thing. She's kind of finding oh. a footing in how much she's now capable of. Fun yeah. fact, that's not Michelle Pfeiffer lying on the floor while she's been eaten by cats. <laughs> that is a dummy of Michelle Pfeiffer lying on the floor being eaten by cats. I'm Cause glad. Because the, <laughs> the cats, were, were the, the, the shots of where you can see her face and they're on her fingers. Yeah, she twitches are, a lot. It's, yeah, it's kind of cool. Because <laughs> that's her with, she's got just tuna underneath her fingernails. <laughs> and that's what the cats are going for. Um, and there's certain, there's certain shots that they had to pull back on. To be, and that's where they use the dummy. But what got me was the eyes, her eyes when she's like kind of transforming, and it's yeah. like, <gasps> like REM that, sort of sleep. That eye yeah. flicker is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, another, f- another fun fact uh, that scene of her getting licked is going to be recreated next time we have a meetup with Goodwill. <laughs> oh, gonna, sorry. Are we going to put Tuna under Goodwill's finger? Pa- I think that Paul's coming back out. Sorry, oh, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to push him out a window. Goodwill might fit that, Jess. <laughs> I bring love how much that escalated. Oh, <laughs> let's lick Goodwill, and Jake's like, I'm going to push him out a window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> legit. Okay, Christopher, here Stop is your Jake. Photoshop challenge for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I want to do well thing where it's like, uh, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you gonna... <laughs> we, we need to, we need to do that. We need to do that whole scene. But we have Goodwill as Selena Kyle and like Paul as <laughs> as my <laughs> friend. <laughs> oh, uh, like, uh, uh, <laughs> I've got to say the costume of Max Shrek before we go any further is fucking amazing i was, want that suit i mean it was kind of like dracula <laughs> got like got hit it by was, a snowblower yeah. <laughs> that, got, that got dipped in tim burton paint yeah it was just I, like I, it's it's like gary oldman dracula but like the chinese toy where they didn't quite make it right and they just <laughs> yeah, tried to paint right. it correct they were like okay, there so, we go. so right <laughs> Um, just just a, a little bit about uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in this. So I feel like she had some of the most cringiest lines in this whole film, but she pulled them off so well. Like think- doing doing the backflips up to Batman and Penguin for the first like, trio meetup <laughs> and just going... Meow. And it's like, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. No, yeah. and she, her line, and the other I- one... I stopped first taking line is proper Catwoman. notes. Let him I do stopped... the other line. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do the other line if someone else wants to do it. No, no, Where's you do, do the other line, Lee. <laughs> oh, fuck it. It's just like I am Catwoman. Hear me raw. Like that. It's so fucking cool. But it's but... delivered so well, yeah. and you just like anyone else that would have seemed crap. Yeah, we've but just then. heard it. I, I ended up. I ended up like. Um, <laughs> I, I stopped taking notes because I was enjoying the film so much. So I stopped taking notes pretty much after like the the penguins mare thing falls. Yeah, yeah I couldn't. And, I couldn't take notes at all during this movie. Yeah. I had to watch it. And all I've got written is just Selena Kyle lines because they're so good. I'm not even. Like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> it's exact. Mine. All this is love. All Selena's. All of the scenes with Selena in transformation scene especially, and that is only yeah. the thing I wrote about the movie itself. <laughs> Well, I've, got, I've got it where she Celia comes back and she's like, "Couldn't you just die?" You know where she's, just like, <laughs> yeah. she's there like a fucking zombie in the office, and he's like, "How are you still alive?" And she's just like hinting that I she blatantly knows. Love and then it's that like interaction. Yeah, and then what is it? Uh, the, the poor boys always confusing your pistols with your privates. And then we're like, oh god, I, paid. You know? I love. Yeah, I love those guards where they're like, "Okay, lady, we take home three hundred. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's just, just like, like you're get lost. <laughs> yeah. No, but I like bit, how she lets them so go. So am I. <laughs> Yeah, I love yeah. that uh, interaction with Alfred as well. It's just hilarious. Like oh, just yeah. Alfred being comedic as well. Where she's like, "Oh, tell Bruce that I uh, did this." Oh, no. uh, just come up with a dirty limerick, and he goes, "One has just sprung to mind." <laughs> that's, that's, that's the next one I got. Where it's like, "Can you just make up a sonnet or a dirty limerick?" And he's like, "One has just sprung to mind." <laughs> it's when um, her and Bruce realize that they are who they are when they're doing the dance scene. And she just goes, well, do we now just 
fight each other and yeah. it, that's that is a really such good a, line that yeah. is such a selena and bruce moment though is like should we just fight now <laughs> yeah because that's that would happen in some superhero yeah. films <laughs> mm-hmm. and in the comics it's got the awkward days, like before they've realized who they are and like every time he's going to church it's like ah oh, it's like you should go for him it's like oh. Oh. It's like, yeah <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but this is becoming really awkward now. Like we're both you know, um, like, up. just building off what we've been saying there about how she, like, delivers the line so well, like, it it's like it's almost as if she's bored, like when she's just like mm. meow, like what, like what, like what <laughs> do you expect me to say? You know, like it's this <laughs> idea of she's just like she's just like I know this is a crap line, but fucking she's, whatever. You know? Yeah, she's like and above the, the gimmick in our woman, own you know? <laughs> universe. <laughs> but it, it's just how she's the range. The of, like if you ever look at your cat and you think what's in your cat's head, it probably talks that <laughs> yeah, kind just of like, thing oh. everything oh. that you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't mind us. But the, the range no, Sammy's yours, the yours are very uh, nice. Is, yeah. <laughs> All the time. You. yeah, they are. <laughs> it's just like. Mine's the... just a bit of a dick. Like, Jeremy looks at you with that level of sass, no matter what you say to <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, but me boys are angels. <laughs> Oh, I mean, last uh, interaction I've got wrote down is about uh, her and Bruce, which I think I love how clever it is, but it's just so stupid. With um, Bruce going, oh no, we've met before. And she's <laughs> like, have we? And he's like, oh no, I mistook me for someone else. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, he, he trips it's... over his lines because he's horny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's like he did mistake himself for someone else. True. It's yeah. not him, it's Batman. But this is well, the yes. whole thing, though. It's all about the empowerment. It's the fact of how Catwoman represents female empowerment. Well, when mm-hmm. she shrugs off the bullshit of, like, you know, the on her answering machine where she's being bothered about beauty products and stuff. And it's like, hey, yeah. you can do this in order to get men to like you because you're worthless without men. And then it's the idea of when she does empower herself then suddenly the men are the ones bowing to her, where the penguin's willing to do st- do anything yeah. for her, Bruce is willing to do anything for her. And it's this whole thing of going, that's not her being Catwoman. She's not in the Catwoman suit when they're doing this. It is her as a woman. And that's the message, really, of Catwoman, I think. But... Um, fun fact, the bird that she puts in her mouth <laughs> was... She really mentally... does it. And she swallows yes, she it. Really, she, really, she really puts it in there. <laughs> But she it was meant to be a fake one because obviously they didn't want to use a bird and they, they didn't want to ask her to do that. Yeah. Like, but she went, it doesn't look realistic. She went, can you just, can I just put it in, let it go, and then that be the scene? And uh, the, mm-hmm. they can do the fake one when she's like there for some time. Yeah, they can so film she, the rest of it later. Uh-huh. <laughs> so and it's because she made the suggestion because they didn't want to put that on her. So she did. She put the she she did the Tony Todd with the real bees, yeah. and she put yeah. the uh, the bird in her mouth, and then she just lets it go. And then that's why she she looks so fucking phenomenal when she's letting this bird go out of her mouth. Is because she's like, I've just fucking that, let a bird out. I my was mouth. joking. I didn't realize that was real. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that one take as well? Because it flies directly into the camera for yeah. like the perfect <laughs> angle and everything. Because again, the, 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 Tim didn't want her to actually put herself and do that. He was. <clears throat> More than happy just to use the fake bird because who the fuck is going to be looking that closely at it? But she <laughs> said it doesn't. There's something doesn't look right about it, so that's why she wanted to put it in and let it go. Did the bird I have thought... to sign consent forms or something? Oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not talking to you about it. fucking consent. <laughs> <laughs> bird <laughs> law. <laughs> yes, consent. Oh, oh, God, no, about the sun. Okay, yeah, that, that's an in joke, everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But like, um, so like Danny DeVito has, you know, like Lee was saying, like Catwoman's lines are shitty. Like Danny DeVito has some of the most ridiculous script writing I've ever heard a human say out loud. But because he's an old school, like professional, it's just believable. Like all of his stupid, like, like really weird, like diatribes he goes on, like, you know, like, like rants shouting to the sky. And when he's like, why stop at the firstborn? All the sexes are equal, <laughs> and the erogenous zones are blown sky high. And I'm like, what is this script? Like, but he he makes it like he makes it believable, and because mm-hmm. he's so like compelling as a child, you don't even like pick up on the the weird sexual no. things. You just like, oh, I this is a man really- who knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He's there was so much on this guy. Such you vote for him, Jake. That could handle that movie because I think pretty much every um, one of the actors at some point has mentioned the fact that when Tim Burton wrote, it's like Tim Burton wrote a design and a look, but mm-hmm. got to write a script. 
yeah <laughs> forgot Sometimes that part that it actually needed like... a story and it's like it's so look at these actors were all so good to kind of like we we can do this <laughs> we can yeah, kind of we have a fine do you know it's more of a i know people class it as obviously it's a tim burton movie because it's all tim burton-esque but keaton is so very much a part of that partnership when it comes down to this movie <laughs> i'm not too sure about the first one and obviously if we ever do a review on the first one i'll find that information out but definitely on this one, there is a partnership there between the two of them that mm-hmm. is in tw- like in it makes the whole movie. Hence, the do reason you, you don't have a lot of Batman time. Do you think that like this is the this is the best that like Burton ever gets? Like Burton, Elfman, like his whole gang and stuff. I think you peaked at like, this moment. <laughs> I think after this, like I started like falling off hard because as a kid I was like well into like Burton because I'd mm. you know I'd seen all this stuff we're too young and like Beetlejuice and stuff like that but mm-hmm. like but- looking back now with like 2024 eyes I'm like at the moment I'm absolutely hating everything Tim Burton's but no, like, he seems like, like the biggest like hack alive <laughs> um I might upset people with this opinion of Tim Burton but it's like I think he's heralded a lot higher than technically what he's produced a lot of the really yeah. good stuff that someone else has been actually behind the work that's yeah. made his best films be so good because mm. it kind of proves in his last sort of few years run of just letting tim burton do stuff on his own it's not great <laughs> and it hasn't Wait, been yeah. good for a very long he, time because if you really he, look at it he has about three good movies he um, needs that he needs a collaboration of others and the, the shame is is the fact it is probably a studio head who went we're just going to use his name because his name holds mm. some weight, but yeah. he needs collaboration. And you can tell in Batman Returns, you can tell in other, like, and obviously the the main one, which is Nightmare Before Christmas, it's like it's not even his movie. It's he didn't direct his. it. Yeah. But well, which he, it's like, is the guy but it's his, it, it, it's his, his story and his weight. art style, but like uh-huh. it's but, everything that good, like the script and everything about. The cinematography is all someone else. Yeah, yeah but I'm going to... After this, you've got Edward Scissorhands, you've got Sleepy Hollow, um, which is why it, Sleepy Hollow, he recast <laughs> Christopher Walken in this. Uh, I, I, Sleepy Hollow might actually be his peak as a yeah, movie no, goes. I, I, mean, I would say Sleepy my, Hollow was his... might be right. Uh-huh. That was his best film. That was his last good film, in my opinion, because after that, we got stuff like Big Fish, Big Fish that didn't really um, hit very well. What was the other one? Big... Was it Big Eyes? Um, no, Black, Black. It was an art. It was a. It was a true story. I, I'm saying big eyes because you've just said big fish, and I can't. <laughs> think I of... I just watched them. Um, I know the... which one you mean, but I can't think what the name of the film what it's called. I know what you mean about the artist, like all the imagery and everything. It's Chris, um, Christoph Waltz is in it. Um, I can't think of what it's called. Then you've got the likes of Alice in Wonderland that comes out. That was Sweeney hideous. Todd, which I've never seen. Oh, Sweeney it's... Todd, I rewatched a month ago and it is fucking <laughs> awful. It's I awful. Did, like I, I moaned about my mates, like I, my theatre mates, and but, basically I was moaning to them about Sweeney Todd is a shit musical. And they're like, it's not. You've just only watched the Tim Burton one where somehow it makes yeah. bad, good songs bad. Well, and everything is rubbish. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always going to be grateful for the likes of Beetlejuice, Edward, but it was called Big Eyes. It was Christoph Waltz mm-hmm. and um, Amy Adams, Ma- um, and it was about an artist. And that was at that moment, I was like, I think I'm done. Is is like, he I the think only? I'm done now. Is he the only person who still gets the like the Tim Burtons before the movie title? Like, is there anyone else left who mm. who still does that? Because, like, but like, like we're all saying, this is a problem across like, loads of will. Yeah, sometimes mm. I mean, he doesn't deserve it, well. but you know, it's... yeah. But like, um. it's a problem in a lot of mediums where like you get this auteur who's like, you know, this is like the mind behind this, and then mm. you you dig a little bit. It's like the Kojima stuff for like Metal Gear, like. He didn't sit. He, he didn't develop the entire video game. He didn't, you know, do the voice acting or anything. Like, yeah, it's his like, <laughs> like, like the noise was saying. It's his baseline script idea and possibly some like, you know, drawings and stuff. Um, but yeah, like 
I think people like the like the simple answer of like, yeah, Tim Burton made this movie, like everything. <laughs> like, but, yeah, but it's never everything. like as simple as that, is it? It's, mm, it's a tough it's one. <laughs> it's the same as everything. Everything <laughs> always needs to be collaboration. As soon as you, someone believes their own hype, and as soon as you go, hey, this person, Tim Burton, is the reason these movies are good, rather yeah. than being like, no, it's the makeup guy as well. It's the script writer. It's the cinematographer. The actors. You know, all yeah. of these things. Yeah, like the actors, all of these things matter. It's it's like it's like you know when like Marilyn Manson became shit as soon as the rest of the band weren't there and you're like oh yeah Tiggy <laughs> was writing all the songs you know and it's, but it's it's that whole yeah. thing and and nowadays we have it a lot where we're we're too willing to put one single person on a pedestal like like yeah. you see it with taylor swift at the minute where they're like oh taylor swift is the thing i'm like i'm pretty sure there's a lot of other people in this picture making yeah. this what you like and I think that's it. It's a lesson that we shouldn't hero worship. But I'm still mm -hmm. a massive fan of Tim Burton. But I yeah. think because he got so famous, people just went, oh, you just control everything then. Oh, it's shit. You know, it's then, shit yeah. when we don't have Michael Keaton inputting things. It's shit when we don't have, like, you know, this yeah. person going, here's what we do for this. Like, if I'm not, if I'm, if you're not reading IMDb or looking at, you know, 10 interesting facts about Batman Returns, you're never going to know that Keaton had such a big part in this movie, uh, just as much as what Burton did when it comes down to the whole piece and it all together. Mm. You're not going to well, know that. Well, one thing for Tim Burton, though, his uh, comment about the third movie was hilarious, of like how he reacted when they'd fired him and he saw Batman Forever. But you say, you don't want a movie too dark, but you're going to put nipples on the bat suit. That's your cross. The darkest cool. decision ever cool. made on film. <laughs> or the greatest. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the greatest. Have we got any more on the Batman or should we get to our ratings? Um, can I just give a shout out to the uh, the big guy who Batman smiles at while he's fighting him? Oh, you mean when he that, goes... That moment is so amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. the he looks down and he's got the bomb in his pants. <laughs> The definite death. Like we can, we yes. can argue that the guy who gets set on fire might jump into the snow or something, but Batman mm. intended him to burn. Yes. And this guy, I'm like, there is no way he got out of that. He is. But whose fault? Whose fault is it though? Because like those clowns brought the bomb. Does Batman mm. just dole out ironic oh. punishment? <laughs> Oh, oh, definitely murders, okay. <laughs> no, honestly, you know what? You know what really gets me about this moment, right? Because we have it in the group all the time. Oh no! Every every once in a while, someone will be like, "It'd be really cool if Batman killed people." And it's like that's the Punisher. Go read that, dickhead. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but they'll they'll bring up these two moments every time. It's like, oh, the person he set on fire in the devil suit <laughs> was killed. Yeah. The the man he knocked into the manhole with the concussive blast. That's not fire. <laughs> uh... the, the man who no sold a punch from batman a few seconds before <laughs> no but like th this is all they've got and then we'll go yeah. back to like he used a gun in the comic and it's like that's all you've got though like like yeah. batman doesn't need to kill you've got but other heroes for that <laughs> like, i know up. that i know that um zack snyder went on the from <laughs> show i don't he's one of name. them yeah <laughs> yeah i don't want to say his name but he went onto <laughs> his show um and he point he made the argument that batman should kill and I just love my man Grant Morrison, who was like, no, if that is what you want in a superhero, then you are completely missing the point of Batman altogether. You're yeah, not or... looking at the bigger picture when it comes to Batman. Yeah, it's like such an important thing for the character. And uh, yeah, I just hate that this movie's used as <laughs> like, yeah. like, this is the one argument yeah. they've got. But, but it is, is funny how... He like he sees this guy doing a flamethrower, and he's like, "Hang on a sec, I've got an idea. <laughs> like, I'm going to turn the battle all the way it's around." It's almost, it's almost <laughs> like on Facebook. I <coughs> a post goes up like that. I know instantly you are there in that comment section defending our boy when it comes to put, down to, to it to get keep Batman. Yeah, <laughs> which I'll always do. I'm coming at, the at it from the I've other way. Is... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's no, what yes, I've yes, got. Yes. It's the really cuteness of um, Danny DeVito still absolutely standing behind Keaton. Um, there's two clips I always see. There's one where they're giving him like almost like a lie detector test. And he's like, which is the right Batman? He's like, him, that's my Batman. It's him and his daughter. He doesn't even wait. Does he? <laughs> doesn't he wait for any other Batman. Batmans to show up. He's like, right. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I think like the Hollywood studios are always fighting each other. Like, do we want the muscle man Batman or do we want the good actor mm. Batman? And they're always like <laughs> going back and forth. Nobody who's ever played Batman has been liked when their casting has gone out. Even Keaton yeah. when he was announced, yeah. like going oh, down yeah. the street, asking, like he can't be Batman. Like that's not Batman. Every single actor has he been was trashed a... until they played the role. Up until that point, he was a he was like a family man actor. Like he didn't mm-hmm. do nothing like on the dark side of things. Or yeah. that's how the when you watch the um, or if wasn't you the first the... one before Beetlejuice though, eighty nine wasn't it? Um, yeah, because wasn't Beetlejuice eighty nine? I can't after? remember. I'm sure hold on, hold after. on. I do actually have. Or was Batman 190? Batman's 99. 89. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Beetlejuice is 88. Oh, oh yeah. Bear in mind was when Beetlejuice when it was like, cast, much of a hit, yeah. though. Like, you know. I think a lot think of it was, was kind of that Keaton didn't look like he could be that big tough guy. He didn't look like he could pull off, like, Batman. Like, maybe Bruce Wayne. a demonic like, creature who. <laughs> I think it's a bigger discussion to have. Yeah. I think I think it's a bigger discussion to have though with fandom where you have to just be like, shut up fans, you're going to like this. Well, this you know, is what I said because about the Affleck. amount of we well, get yeah, that's it. Like, I didn't you know, like it. <laughs> <laughs> and he still didn't like it. But I was just like, give him a give him a chance. Like I don't I don't know how I feel. Because when you look at Batman, there's two aspects of it. You've got the Bruce Wayne side, you've got the Batman side. I generally didn't think that he is going to be able to pull off Bruce Wayne. I was wrong. I kind of like that Bruce Wayne, but I definitely saw Affleck as a Batman, as that older version of Batman. Anyway, um, I just and There's then the we with... like Affleck is the only one who's the right height and has the right jawline to technically be Batman. I'm sure it's like there's some sort of technicality mm-hmm. with him. He's the only one who actually fits the proper statistics for Batman. Didn't Everyone else that... has always been too short. I, just I think when the, I love um, Batfleck. <laughs> I do. So I good. don't mind. I generally don't mind him. When I was that evolution of the bat suit, when it gets you look at from Keaton's Batman suit is kind of like bulky and padded out, and then you go to Kilmer's, which is quite slimmed down. Then you go to Clooney's, mm. which we all know what that one looks like. But then you go to. Well, he's Nolan's. got two. He's got his snow outfit as well. That's at the true. <laughs> that is true. But then you've got Nolan's bat suit. And yeah. that is so weirdly put together. I know... head on a stick. <laughs> yes, it is. But I know where the, I know where they were going. Now they've explained it is that they needed the flexibility. They were obviously learning from the other ones to, yeah. And they were using all of this like advanced material that would like fl- like create more flexibility, but also look more like. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I don't want to say robotic, but it, you know what I mean, like mechanical yeah, it was, as well. It was like body armor, like, uh-huh. like yeah, yeah. That's the best way for it. And then it was the most. To... It was most realistic, I think. Yeah, it was the idea of this the, is what cowl, he would have to be wearing. You the know? cowl's just it, it doesn't it doesn't flow well with the bottom to the the cowl. No. It just, it just <laughs> there's something nothing there's something not right about it. But then you go to Affleck suit. I didn't realize how bulky. <laughs> and beefed up that suit actually is like it is huge it's very frank miller i would say yeah but that's it. i don't think you would have gotten affleck in any other suit that hadn't been designed by frank miller because yeah. the only reason he did daredevil was because he in a hundred years thought he would never play batman and he is a huge frank miller fan and thought i'll daredevil that's the closest i'm <laughs> gonna get to it and then he goes and gets batman i can i just say something possibly controversial uh for you sammy it's the idea of i think i really struggle because i don't like val kilmer batman but i think i what i think is because i can't i i have to think of batman in the context of the film and i think batman forever is an awful film i think it's probably the worst out of the four of them i actually think batman Ooh. and robin is better than forever uh, but <laughs> but but it's the fact of like and I like, like Batfleck hasn't been in a good film. Like all of the films that Batfleck is in are awful. Like so yeah. you know yeah, it's not a good Batman script, versus yeah. Superman, awful. <laughs> and we're the, never gonna get it. So you know, yeah. the, the Justice <laughs> no. League, awful. The remade Justice League with the, all the edits, still awful. Like and it it's just had going, some moments though. Oh yeah, but that's the thing. It's the idea of like the whole film needs to be good for me. And that's know, the thing. No, that's I why I'm you, only like you. You know, so so I don't even think of Batfleck, even though he exists and stuff. I'm just mm. going like, I, no, I just I, I, I didn't like any clear. film he was in. You know, I want to make it clear though. Kilmer is my Batman. He is not my Bruce Wayne. 
He was a terrible persuader. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like Kilmer and Clooney and them get the butt voice right. I, even Christian oh, Bale. What? Clooney um, did? Like, oh, I think he, Clooney's butt voice like... is amazing. Like, like, I'm Batman. Instead of like, Rachel, I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Bale's just shit yeah. in it. <laughs> but yeah, you're right though. This this Keaton in this movie, he does the, the gravel voice. Like when he's talking to Alfred, like he switches it on. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, like nobody else has really been able to hack it since like Keaton and make it not like very, very silly. <laughs> like, it, it feels like I a city deserves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like I will admit, like I love the you know the um I've forgotten the name of them, but basically the you know the Dark Knight, you know Batman. The Nolans, uh, yeah, yeah, the Nolans. I, I really, really like them. But the bat voice is ludicrous in them. I, like, I think it is one of the weakest parts of the whole trilogy. I have so many issues with Nolan's Batman. I love Batman Begins. I, I love the um, Raj Al Ghul. Raj, Raj Al Ghul. Oh, Liam Neeson. Is Raj Al yeah. Ghul. Love it. Love it. The Scarecrow I, as well. Oh, I am going to say something that is such a hot take and possibly controversial. I cannot stand Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really silly and overacted oh. when you look back on it now. <laughs> he got... He he got an Oscar for that performance. That was, if you wanted to hand pity Oscars out that, that year, <laughs> that was the one that they were given out because he did not. Oh, it's so hyped up. It really is. And I'm just not a I bit. I know like... Paul is going to be screaming I, when he. This is the bit he's going to edit out, isn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> leave all the Paul bits in. <laughs> and the Paul is that bit, but that is going to cut. I, I'll disagree. Like, I, I genuinely. Oh, but, like, how Paul Nirvana are credited so big by everyone because obviously Kirk Vane died. Mm. Yeah. Now they've got to be held on so much higher. Like, what could it they have been? And their back stuff was so good. If they'd still been going, no one would like Nirvana as much as they do. We'd all admit that they were terrible. They were not the peak of the thing. And it's kind of the same with Heath Ledger. That obviously, it's hard to say that he did it bad because everyone knows it's his final movie and things. But it's not like it still doesn't kind of repair that really weird version. I mean, I, 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 I want to disagree. Thank you. I, I want to disagree. Sorry. It's like, I don't, you know, I, I, I disagree with that. But it's the idea of like... It's not the Joker. Like, that's the thing. It's like, I love the character mm -hmm. that it is. I love I love the acting. I love the way it is because it's so... I think it's a really great portrayal of just this absolute psychopath. And it's not realistic, but I just love everything about the character. But is it the best Joker? No, because no. it's not the Joker at all. It, I will give him props but on the look. I do like look. it. I will give him props on the look. Obviously, the commitment that, that, that he that he he took to it. He didn't. The best part about it is that he didn't change anything. He is the same. He's acting it exactly the same all the way through. It's just for me. I just didn't see this as like Oscar worthy. Oh my god, he has completely revolutionized it. This. This is the Joker that we need. He's I doing just a silly clown it. voice. Like, let's be real about it. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I do remember watching Batman Begins and the Joker when the Joker card comes out at the end our, and our watching big for that. Watching yeah. Anthony flip his yeah. shit when that came on, and then obviously the talk, even the talk of Heath Ledger being the Joker. No one wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> Until they, oh, that's I all think they the wanted. The still gets was because that whole thing of Crystal. I'm like, yeah, we've got to make it realistic, which is like, so ninety percent of your villains are out then. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It's realistic. Here's use. here's Clayface. <laughs> like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, and then you then you get then you I get still, Hardy. I still imagine Sammy, doing like a I Killer Croc, and he's just got eczema. It's just a guy with severe eczema. <laughs> like, oh, did you see Suicide Squad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but. Sammy, I, I really still want you and uh, Dan to look into the the Batman animated series, uh, series mm -hmm. Clearface ones, Feet of Clear, because um, that's very old Hollywood, because he's actually like an old Hollywood actor who uh, loses his good looks and stuff and can't be in movies anymore, and I think you'd really enjoy that. <laughs> it's, it's so good. And he's a monster. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, I think um, it's like a so, two-parter, but yeah. So we've had Sammy fit in a death moment in with Heath Ledger there. Um, <laughs> can, can we uh, like finish up? I didn't with purposely these... do that. Like I never mentioned once that he was dead. I don't, I don't think you ever mean it. Just you know, you're it a natural happens. at it. It just happens. Um, before we go to the scoring, can we? We haven't mentioned the penguin's death, and I think that's How a really important scene as well. How did he 
Why? So yeah, he landed a Batmobile on top of him <laughs> and then knocked him down a window. <laughs> I, I think, to be fair, the fall is pretty far onto actual cold water. So it yeah. is. Right. It's probably going to, like, at least do internal ble bleeding or something. Like, yeah. Also, I was how... thinking this is when he's just floating at the end, like, through, like, yeah. kind of like he just goes back to the sewers. Like, it was almost kind of, you feel sort of bad for him in the end. Yeah, I was. Like, oh, he tried to do, and he just ended up thrown back in the sewers. Anyway. I was going to ask this: Do you guys all feel sorry for him? And... Well, yeah, yeah. I think he's. I think he's such a sad character that he's he, he's never had a chance. He, he's never known. Obviously, never known that he, his parents. He's never had the chance. Obviously, he's going to look at Bruce with so much resentment that Bruce got the life that he never had, mm. and he doesn't know how to handle. He doesn't know how to deal with things. He doesn't know how to act in society. Hence, the reason why everything backfires on him. I do generally feel like he's a sad, sad character. I, I, I entirely disagree because the fact is, <laughs> you've disagreed with I me know. all night. <laughs> I am. I am. We're gonna have to take this outside, Sam. Devils We're gonna have to have some kind of slapping match. Go on. <laughs> you like, would win. I don't. I don't <laughs> think it would have been. I want like, to do. I don't is think it would have been you as sad. Open, so, open one of your figures, and you'd be like, "No, anything." <laughs> I don't think it would have been as sad. You come in my if... house again. You stay out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for Jar Jar, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, if, sorry. if those. <laughs> If those real trained penguins didn't come out and carry him into the water there at the end, <laughs> yes. like that, they wouldn't have been as sad. That those yeah. penguins made it. They took him yeah, because they have a little funeral like, for him. Like, a, a really and it's like one. it's like them taking the dads like yeah. down into the. The the it is grave. Sad penguin noises and stuff, isn't it? Is they yeah. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and they bring like back that. that music box sort of song, like mm. you know the his like his theme, theme. Effectively, is it the penguins that the, that we felt sorry for all this time, and not the penguin? Yeah, think, pretty much. But, but yeah. What, what, what I was gonna say, like the the reason I disagree with uh, Sammy is the fact of like the penguin is someone who has a horrible, horrible start in life. And is given the opportunity to turn it around. Like, yes, it is through blackmail and stuff, because he does go for a crime syndicate, and it does mention in his past that, hey, he worked at a circus and loads of kids started going missing. And you just yeah. don't like, okay, so Ooh. maybe he's not a particularly good egg. And then later yeah, on, cause, cause yeah, I was gonna... Bruce looks into them. But then it has it, like, the first thing he does is the Batman goes, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne goes, oh, I bet he knows who his parents are. So why is he going to the, the registry office? Yeah. And it's purely so that he can make them, like, take the names of all the firstborn in Gotham. That's all yeah. he's doing there over that time in the office. So it's this idea of going, so yeah, so he was given the opportunity to become mayor of Gotham if he just kept quiet. Played it straight. Kept, yeah, played <laughs> it straight and then could have had a proper life from there. But instead, he's like, no, nah, still gonna, still gonna form a plan to kidnap and kill all these kids. And you're like going, yeah, actually, fuck the. Well, I, feel like, I feel like me and you watch two different movies. Well, there, no, that, that's a, that's that's the thing though. Like, I definitely did not pick up on that stuff as a kid. Like, you know, the mm -hmm. the yeah. whole like fake backstory thing. Um, like, because I don't know, those lines are kind of throwaway. Where he's like, oh, there was the, you know, the penguin child. It's like, it's friggin', it's back to always sunny again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How was the frog kid? <laughs> I am frog man. Um, but yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. So he was basically, he basically took a bunch of the, like, the carnival, like the freak show with mm -hmm. him, like to the sewers and formed yeah. like a gang. Which Batman is aware of beforehand. I can't remember what they call it, like the red something gang. The red but yeah, it's yeah, like, he knew it. Right, yeah. it's Red Triangle Gang, I think. Yeah, so it's like yeah. he can't he can't drop this whole like massive revenge plot, and as soon as anything mm -hmm. goes wrong, he's like, right back to the child Acting. stealing plan. And, and I think yeah. this is the thing: it's it's on. I think it's on the victim to rise above in a lot of cases, and the idea yeah. of no matter how shit you've been through, cool. the person who can like smile and have a good life afterwards, cool. rather when... than seeking revenge. Yeah, yeah. but when yeah. you're a super villain, like. <laughs> On. you can't have that way you can't have that thinking it's the classic thing though isn't it when you when you're on a revenge quest you know dig two graves at the end <laughs> like yeah. one for yeah. you want revenge on then. i i feel yeah. like when you know you're looking at the newspaper uh the the circus i feel like a lot of them images are either taken from the movie freaks or mm. genuine mm. circus pictures like i when i was looking at them i was like They're i'm sure are, i've yeah. seen them images before <laughs> but didn't bother to go and find that but I was 
I, I thought I you were going to go in a different direction there. I thought you were going to be like, when you see those pictures, the newspapers, yeah, I bet those kids deserved it. Fuck those I, I want to make it very clear to anyone who doesn't know Freaks is a movie. Um, yeah. It's I'm not just calling Circus Folk that Freaks is a genuine a hell of a movie. movie. Hell the of a movie. the one of us line in. That's yeah, where that comes from. Us. We will be um, we will be review, reviewing that on Monsters at some point. Oh, he did do a, um, an Elephant Man quote, though, when he was, I am not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really good. Have you done that? Or, you haven't done that on Monsters yet, have Which you, one? The Elephant Man? No, the haven't. Oh, <laughs> Graham's going to come and be like, you're calling Joe Merrick a monster, are you? <laughs> <laughs> How fucking dare you? <laughs> How dare you, my boy, John Merrick? <laughs> Right, let's get into the ratings careful. of it. <laughs> yeah, massively. Ratings. I had to tell Sarah off the other day, and she didn't even pick up on it because I says Jake told us I can't mess the ratio up, and she picked. She went. She went with four point five on hers on Empire, and I was like, "Oh, you clearly." That's what I'm saying. Is it? Is it? You're just throwing away the five point scale. You've made it ten point. Where well, you might as well no, just say rating out of ten. <laughs> exactly. So we're, 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 kicking, <laughs> we're leaving it with. The, we're leaving it in Jake's. The way Jake said. Hi. Co-host time. I get to enforce the rule. Um, there you go. Okay. There you go. Um, five stars for me. I can't really fault this movie. Like, I definitely agree. You know, like, there's no wasted scene. And every, well, every actor except maybe Walken is 100% on point. Um, mm-hmm. But it's sad because I feel like there could have been a, a Walken performance in there that would have been, like, perfect. You just needed a few extra takes, but... Maybe Tim Burton was scared of him. Like, <laughs> <was saying>. no, <laughs> it's fine, Mister Walken. You did a great job. <laughs> He's like, "Would you like me to do another take, Mister Burton?" <laughs> He's just like, "No." <laughs> no. <laughs> have, you, okay. have you seen the things online where it's like explaining all the different uses of commas, and it just has at the end, it's like the, you know the the standard comma, the uh, Oxford comma, the Walken comma, and it's after yeah. every single word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like that's like he's the Walken comma. <laughs> Brilliant. Go on then, uh, Jessica. What's your rating out of five? Uh, it's seven to be five. I mean, yes. like peak childhood <laughs> movie, and clearly caused a lot of psychological things because my entire wardrobe is now built upon shiny, tight-fitting <laughs> clothing. No, that's just yeah. right choices. That's not psychological. Yeah, that's that's just that's... good choices. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be living nicely in a Kyle dream because I'm learning how to make latex clothing at the moment. And like, there are certain points around I'm like, I'm living the dream. Like, no, I'm getting that gotta, movie moment. Just got to learn how to do nine backflips in a row, and you're yeah. almost there. You should have your you should have your <laughs> signature. Your signature in your latex needs to be like the white. You know, the white lines that goes along the suit. You could have like a little Jessica signature like that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I like uh, that. Oh, yeah. I'll see. I, I have good ideas sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Graham, go on. Give us your give us your rating. Okay, I'm I'm terrible with ratings usually because I will never ever give something top marks because I'm always like, oh, there's got to be there's going to be something that knocks it mm-hmm. off. It's always going to be a nine point five maximum for me. But that, no, that's like I'm, immediately. <laughs> I'm going to give it a five. Like I genuinely, after Ooh. watching this again the other day. I can't think of anything like like even yeah, like I disagree yeah. obviously with everyone today. Uh, but with like Jake, where like Walken is one of my favorite things about this. Where like well, when I think of Batman Returns, I immediately think of Walken, and then I think of the other characters. And obviously, part of it's the costume and stuff. But it's like Max Shrek, I think, is a great character in this movie. But yeah, yeah, there's nothing like the 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 nope. soundtrack, the story, the cinematography, the art style, the acting, the costumes. Everything about this is absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, five stars. Five. <laughs> Let's see if Lee's gonna fuck this uh, ratio. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I'm gonna give it a four point nine nine recurring. Uh, just to okay. it to the I don't man. accept. It's a it's a six wow. point scale. And that's, uh, that's no, the I would, other option. I would, oh, hang on. Uh, my, oh, yeah, um, on I, I'm gonna get. I'm, I'm gonna give this a five. It's up there with uh, the Goonies and Moonshiners. Um, it's <laughs> just a fantastic movie. It. <laughs> it's so much better than the '89 one. Um, yeah, five stars for me. That does sound like something he would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to agree with all y'all. Um, it's definitely a five. So it's five across the board for Batman Returns. <laughs> I feel like we should have some confetti or a balloon. We just give it a lead, it doesn't matter. Paul Lee, Paul Lee. Paul Lee's Lee's giving it a five as well. 
<laughs> has he sub- oh, has- Lee's not getting a vote. Paul Lee is not getting a vote. It's just Lee. <laughs> okay, hold on. Has, has Pauline like overtaken the weaker personality? Is that what we're getting? Yeah. Paul I can't believe Pauline we created a over. new character with Paul Lee. <laughs> I know. There's, there's been too many new characters recently. We need to rein it I mean, back he in. is our sketch king. Like he does all like, the sketchy videos. So, God, yeah. Please, if anyone hasn't watched the uh, Lee's <sighs> Wrath of Khan sketch, it's absolutely oh, so brilliant. Good. Khan! <laughs> the effects are top, top notch. They're, 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 they're better than the Flash I've heard. <laughs> please Be watch off. it. <laughs> please watch the Flash, even just to. Even just skip past bits just to get to Keaton. Just do that. Well, just fast forward. If, if me and Jake watch it, Jess, will you hold my hand throughout it? And like when I start I getting, hold your hand, that's if, fine. when I start if getting we... irrationally oh, angry, I'll just be like, no. <laughs> oh, is he going to invite me to hold something as well? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you invited that one by yourself then Lee, no Lee, I said hold my hand singular for you I'd need both hands <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, even a third I don't know <laughs> this has been Nerdy Up North's review of Batman Returns we are are we admitting that we're not live <laughs> oh yeah sorry we oh should've... no this is totally live uh, you know what, the dogs are amazing yeah. that's lovely well well <laughs> get them off the damn keyboards yeah, that's... <laughs> um, Hi, Beth, but no, I, i'm tell you what i'm proud of us because we didn't do the obvious joke of being like like making fake predictions and stuff for things that mm. would happen but no yeah uh we're recording this on 2nd of april if you want to time stamp us to hell <laughs> yeah, but it'll go out cause... on sunday the 7th when we're all too tired from a, a horror convention to care what's happening on youtube <laughs> yeah i don't know at this point i feel like we're still maybe in the car there might be a lot of arguments um on people might fall down out down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be controlling the car from uh, a news van <laughs> nearby. <laughs> uh, hey. Well, I generally cannot remember at this moment in time what next week's episode is. But because it is Sunday when you are watching this, tomorrow is Monster Monday. And we are doing our first horror movies. And you, oh, you get the pleasure of listening to me talk about mine, which is... Dolly dearest. Oh, it's gonna <laughs> wow. it's gonna be something. Um and then we have so Monday is monsters, Tuesday is some does someone do a Twitch on a Tuesday? Who knows? Some weirdo mm. comes on Twitch sometimes. Maybe um, at, at Gaming Up North, probably not like the next week after this, but we are gonna hit Tekken this month. So it might be Ooh. the month of Tekken uh this time around. <laughs> April, April is Tekken. And we're going to try and summon a special guest uh, for that one. Uh, he loves to possess us all <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then we will have Trek on. Leah, you do. Will you be doing anything? Remember, this I'll... is not this week; it's the week after. Yeah. Yes, I'll, pro- I'll probably be on there on Thursday doing something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> I mean, that, that is the same for this will, week too. Will you need both hands? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and Graham won't have a clue what he's doing for Trek the following Friday yeah, because he's spun the wheel yet. So I'm exactly. gonna say we're gonna be reviewing Code of Honor, which is a brilliant <laughs> next generation episode. But you lovely Fix folk, the wheel. If, you, if you check the community page and the Facebook page every Tuesday, a schedule goes up for what is happening in the Twitch and YouTube world. Jessica, have you got anything going on at the moment that you want to promote? No, I just want to get this outfit. <laughs> yeah. Baby, yep. totally understand. Remember, get the reverse can suction I, hose. <laughs> can, I, can I just say I because I think? Oh. oh, sorry. I think next Sunday is creep show. Oh. Is that right? Show off? I didn't know. Show off. Yeah, you have to show me. Has to show me. I did open the one. Note. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Graham. Go on. What were you going to no, say? No, I just want to mention because I, I can't remember because I haven't checked the fucking one note. Uh, when the next time I'm on the main one, but I just want to mention in um on the twenty. Let's check the schedule. It is no. It is. It is on the nineteenth and twentieth. So it'll be after the trekking episodes that we have on that week. Mm-hmm. Uh, myself and my best mate Ian are going to be doing another 24-hour oh. gaming stream oh, on wow. Twitch. Which will Excellent. be twitch.tv forward slash Sinoise. It'll be in the link descriptions. All that luck. But yeah, so to raise money for St. Benedict's Hospice uh, because of our 
uh, friend Beth who passed away last year. So I'll be mm. doing a 24-hour gaming stream. There's going to be a GoFundMe page set up so that you can donate. Awesome. And there will be community games for everyone. So we'll be having the quip lash out Ooh, and all of the silly things. That... It'll, be, it'll be great. And then... And then also, uh, after that, I'm going to be fundraising for Mix Drag Great Britain, which is a competition I'm a finalist in, which is like a countrywide drag competition that uh, <laughs> is crazy. And over the next couple of months, I'm going to be putting loads of crazy stuff together and getting all of us nerds involved in that because you're all yep. my fundraising slaves. I don't know. <laughs> by <laughs> extension... We are one. <laughs> yeah, just just give us a call because if we can somehow get you to win that competition, it would absolutely. be absolutely amazing. It really, it really is really would. Like, Anything I, we can do. I really hope none of the organizers watch this, but it literally is part of the <laughs> as part of the um like the the prize. But basically, the person who wins the competition gets to be a representative for the community on like a countrywide stage. So you mm -hmm. get to speak in Parliament. <gasps> oh my gosh! Wow! I Please guess. tell me you agree with me that you want to see this happen. <laughs> so yes. Like... Yeah, that, that we need to make this happen. We need Graham to be standing in Parliament, even if he just whispers what he normally says. It would. I would never not. say that. I'd have a dress saying it. <laughs> my, sister, my, sister has, my sister has some just have a real way you just go ah. no, my sister has some beautiful gold hoop earrings that has in the middle <laughs> fuck the Tories right in the middle of it <laughs> my mother loves them earrings <laughs> <laughs> so please remember to like share and subscribe all of our links are for everyone and anything that we ever do is down below and I feel that's it. I've got it. You... No, I've got. I've got to do the line. I've got. Oh, oh wait. That is Polly oh, gonna do oh, the line? Are you gonna do it? <laughs> See you in bat time. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one? Yeah. Keep, we'll finish it. Going. Keep going. Doing bat channel. Finish it. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Stay nerdy, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.